episode 233 right here on Sifted Games at Sifted.net. I'm Shane Satterfield, and I am very, very happy to finally be back live on Twitch with Game Face. I want to thank all you guys for your patience. Uh, we're just in a bad position with COVID and TriCaster TDs, but Jared, our savior, is back. Thank God. Jared, what's up, man? <laughs> How are you doing? It's been a while. I've never been so happy to get a text from someone when you texted me that you're going to be able to do the show this week. So, <laughs> you don't understand. Since you've been gone, like Matt and I have been recording it offline, and then the show has to be built from scratch in edit. And I have been working until 3 or 4 in the morning on Wednesday nights for the last, like, month. So... Thank God you're back. <laughs> I'm so happy about it. Uh, I hope you guys are. Yeah, that, Jared, you, you're the man. I'm so glad you finally got back. Uh, hopefully you guys are too. Uh, I have really, really missed uh, doing the shows live with you guys. Um, just missing the interaction with you guys. Um, all the feedback, the great Q&As that we do at the end of the show. Just talking with you guys before the show, after the show. All of it. I've missed all of it. It's great to be back. Uh, one thing I do want to remind you guys of, and you guys are already doing it, and I appreciate it so, so much, is Twitch Prime. We, for the last two months, we have got hammered on Twitch Prime, like literally like half of what we're used to getting. And obviously a big part of that um, is that you guys generally come to watch Game Face Live, and that's where you all subscribe. Uh, it's great to see all you guys doing it right now. It's it's making my heart very happy. Um, Wampler13, um, Emperor Dread, Bobby Budnick, Mega Drive Guy, Gerzilla, Lestevid, Ultimate Villain, Thank you guys, all you guys for subscribing via Twitch Prime. Uh, folks who watch this on YouTube, uh, if you don't have any cash um, and you want to support the show, Twitch Prime, baby. You can give us $2.50 free every month. All you have to do is just click one button. It's so easy. Um, it's down in the description below. It makes a big difference for us. So thanks to all you guys jumping on the Twitch Prime train uh, just as we get started. In fact, the hype train has already reached level four. How is that even possible? Because JM Rain 99 is making it JM Rain. It rain again. Thank you, JM Rain. What a, this is great to come back to uh, seeing all this because I've been really bummed, guys. Like <laughs> I've said it before, like that money isn't like extra cash that we have to throw around like we need it to pay the bills so very glad to be back very glad that you guys are jumping in with the twitch prime it makes a huge huge difference for us uh, a couple things to get to before we get on with the show proper first of all after last week's episode i have finally made my decision on the tv matt any predictions on which one i chose um not really i mean i hope you listen to me but that's, <laughs> well you're, you're always gonna say that which yeah. one do you think i, I chose just guess. I, I think you probably chose the uh, OLED. Okay. Um, actually, I, I should have said everyone guess in the chat before I reveal which one I picked. Mm -hmm. It would have been fun to see what people thought. But Matt, you were right. <laughs> I chose the OLED. Um, and I know probably in a year I'm going to regret it. Um, but the way I'm looking at this TV purchase is I'm probably going to own this TV for literally like 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I pay a little more now to have it for next gen, that's okay. This TV is going to be my bro for a long time to come. So I decided to bite the bullet and spend the extra money. Uh, people had talked last week about this technology called EARC uh, that mm -hmm. could possibly get the audio back to my receiver without needing an audio out from the TV. Unfortunately, my receiver only has ARC and not EARC. And the difference is ARC is a very limited bandwidth. So you get like a really compressed 5.1 or stereo and that's it. So still trying to sort that stuff out. Another reason I decided to just pull the trigger on this TV is because I'm going to tear down like my whole entertainment center and then get a new cabinet front underneath it and then redo it with all like the wiring and the router for the ethernet and all that. I don't want to have to tear all that apart and do it again. It's a big mm -hmm. job. Um, so just for a I've considered doing that just by looking at that shelf I have and being like, where is the PS5 going to fit? <laughs> I know. I'm already doing it. Like, I've already been measuring stuff, and I figured mm -hmm. out that I'm going to need a new uh, entertainment center as well. I'm yeah, gonna I think it's just, I think this is going to be my first vertical console of all time because I usually put them horizontal. I just don't see any other way to, to put this it. thing. Yeah, I'm kind of there with you. So anyway, I decided on the OLED. I have not bought it yet. So my next thing is trying to find it as cheaply as possible. And right now there's some pretty good deals. It's on sale kind of for like 2300 at Costco and Amazon. 
but I'm afraid Black Friday is going to roll around and they're going to chop the price by like seven or eight hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So um, here's so here's what I've heard is that like Black Friday stuff is not really going to happen. Okay. The same way as usually like everyone I've seen in terms of market watch and in terms of like economic forecasts in terms of retail stuff has basically said if you see a deal that you like on something post like October 5th just do it because because there aren't really going to be the crowds like you know the oh, day of stuff that makes sense. like people that are just throwing sense. the discounts out now they want your money now they want to beat everybody else to the punch okay. so if you find if you find an acceptable price like get it and like maybe try to make sure you get it from somewhere that has a price match guarantee for a certain amount of time okay. um you know you can wait closer to thanksgiving if you think that's wise but like everyone i've uh, you know all the the professional market people or retail watchers have basically said that Black Friday is two months this year. Like it's just the whole okay. holiday shopping that's, that's encouraging to hear. So, and the other thing too, is that I can't really wait until Black Friday. I need this TV in like in three time weeks. for the new consoles. Yeah. It's like a week's window, but it's a huge window. Like yeah. we're going to be doing tons of launch coverage and stuff like that. I just can't do it without it. So, and, we, and you know, from seeing mine that like, it's a difference. Yeah, like it's going oh, to impact your opinion of what you're playing on these new things. Yeah, somebody asked me on Sifted this week. They're like, I don't understand how you buying your new TV is going to help us. You know, how does it tie into content on the site? And they're like, are you going to like put the TV in your shoots or something? It, no, I was like, no, that's not it. How it's going to help you is I'm playing the games the way they're meant to be played. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a big deal in this last gen where pretty much everything was 1080p with like 4k checkerboard now it is a big deal not playing these games in 4k you're not giving yeah. them a fair shake one most importantly hdr yeah like the I mean, hdr changes what you changes what you're saying sometimes not for the better like there's been a couple yeah. games where i'm just like where is the balance <laughs> um destiny yeah. 2 was like that i'm just like i can't see anything when i first played destiny 2 after i got the new tv i'm like i can't see like and and that's that's when you really realize like oh Destiny, you can't turn the flashlight on at will in destiny 2 like it just comes on when you're in the dark and sometimes it doesn't know how dark things are yeah um but it makes a huge you know something like you know uh, horizon zero dawn like that's a different game in yeah, hdr it looks different so i went for it i'm gonna get the oled the other part that really convinced me is like as i kept doing re or reading reviews watching reviews on youtube Pretty much every single review for that TV started with, I'm here to review the best TV on the market. Mm -hmm. Every time. Like, and they were all you, like- You cannot beat the LG panels. Yeah, I mean, they all were like the biggest like TV YouTubers and it's mm -hmm. unanimous. So um, if you're like me and you've been waffling on a TV and you can afford a nicer TV, I do think the smart decision is to go with an OLED. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, everyone's different and has different needs and wants and things like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think one of the most, I mean, the HDR quality is important um, if you're looking at any TV. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> and I don't have this actually. Um, the 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 HDMI 2.1 ports yeah yeah like that's going to oh, be yeah. important too well, we're I, I'm talk pretty about sure my TV does, later sure my show. TV doesn't have those um, I, so I know it doesn't yeah so um, I might I might have to upgrade when the t I mean it kind of depends if these systems actually start playing things regularly at that level we'll get to um, that a little so later yeah, in the show because I'm starting to really have my doubts right now so like, I didn't have as exciting a week in that regard but I did get one thing. What? Um, a very late Kickstarter arrival. <laughs> the Shenmue 3 art book. And I gotta say, when I when I saw the shipment notice for that, like I almost wanted to email them back, be like, you can keep it. Like, don't don't worry about it. We're fine. That is hilarious. And then uh, I got an I, they shipped another thing. I didn't even realize some other reward. It's like a I don't know what it is. It's some like, like pendant or necklace. I think it's like a replica of the mirror or something. And I'm just like, can you just stop reminding me I did that? <laughs> uh, we just hit the hype train. I just shared the emotes. Thanks, you guys. This is freaking awesome. Gorzilla, thank you for the bits. Um, let's see. The Ronin R, thank you for Twitch Prime. Justin uh, Horman Get subscribed a little bit of back. Yep. Get up kid one two eight four. Thank you for Twitch Prime. I Viz, thank you for Twitch Prime. I, you can see all the people who have not done it for a yeah. while. It stinks, but it's unfortunately we just couldn't do the show on Twitch. So anyway, I pulled the trigger on the TV. Now I just have to pull the trigger on the payment, which is always the hardest part. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know when I do get it. I may even just do like a little unboxing thing or setting stuff up. We're, we're planning like a bunch of launch coverage around ps5 and are you guys, gonna uh are you Xbox gonna put it on a stand or are you gonna mount it on the wall 
yeah, I rent an apartment, so mm -hmm. I don't want to have to pay for them to fill the big hole in the wall when I move out. So it's just going to go on a, an entertainment center, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I wish I could put it on the wall and be able to swivel it so while we're eating dinner and stuff, we could see it. But when you rent, you can only do so much. Um, mm -hmm. There are people in our building that have done it, but I'm not going to pay for yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's not that big. I mean, I put a bunch of holes in the wall in my old apartment, mostly from shelving. I mean, I had to ask, ask to do it, but... Yep. Well, she's going to I didn't be, get yeah. my deposit back, so you're right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, she's going to be entertainment entertainment center bound until I finally have a home. God willing that'll happen someday. That mm -hmm. would be nice. Uh, so anyway, there you go. That's my final TV decision. We have one little thing to uh, tie up before we get into the show proper, and that is we have drawn the winner for this month's indie loot fiend um, patron. So those who pledge $20 or more per month are a part of that tier. And once a month, we draw a winner from that group of people. And there were, I believe, like 60 or 70 people or patrons who are pledging at that, uh, at that amount or higher. And we chose one winner. And the winner is, we really need like a drum roll, like in the TriCaster to play whenever I do this stuff. And the winner is Mick Eaton. And I'm very happy to hear that McKeaton won something because he has literally been down with Sifted from day one. He has been uh, a big dollar patron for since the beginning. Uh, it always feels good to see people who have supported us the way he or she has. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, to be honest. Uh, he or she has uh, win something from our Patreon. So there you go. We'll do another drawing next month. Um, and just so you guys know, he basically has the option of either an indie game of his choice or he can tell us that he just wants credit towards some game that he's playing. So uh, you can either get an indie game or you can get loot towards a game that you're currently playing. And uh, we'll reach out to him on Patreon as soon as the show is over. And uh, we'll get that out to him as soon as possible. Congratulations, McKe McKeaton. Uh, Well-deserved, man. You have stuck behind us uh, through thick and thin. So I really appreciate it. All right. It's time to get on with Game Face 233. I'm really excited to be doing this live. Uh, we're going to kick things off with, as we I think we've done for the last several episodes, next-gen updates. We've got, Matt, we got three weeks. I saw a tweet from Microsoft yep. today. T-minus three weeks till next-gen, until Generation 9. Are you pumped, dude? I am. I am, like, really excited. And sort of. I mean, I, I have something I'm very concerned about the week before. Uh, before I can be, <laughs> I need to see what happens the week before, before I decide if the consoles are a celebration or a consolation. Okay. So, yep. <laughs> That's a good point, man. <laughs> it, it could either be like, this is just the icing on the cake. Yeah. Or it could be like, this is going to dry up my tears. It's gonna... A lot of, a lot of important stuff is happening in November, first it couple is. weeks of November. And, uh, not I, bigger I, than the one yeah. I heard. Absolutely. So but, anyway, uh, gonna... but yeah, I'm ex I mean, oh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting, you can tell I'm excited when I stop watching pre preview material for something. Yeah. So I've kind of stopped watching Miles Morales stuff. Okay. Um, well, that's because, too bad because we're going to talk about it in today's Yeah. Show. But I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff come out, but there's a point at which like, like, I'm just you like, don't right, like, like, you got me, you got it. We're, yeah. we're in, we're cool. Like, yeah. um, but uh, it's all really cool. I really actually like the way they're, they're approaching that. Like Insomniac has been very active online, like mm -hmm. showing new stuff and getting the hype up. And uh, I actually watched into the spider verse last night. Cause I was had it all in my mind. Like it's mm -hmm. working. Like it's working guys. <laughs> well, game informer blew the game out this week. And yeah. we're going to talk yeah. about some of the stuff that they revealed in their excellent coverage that they did over the last uh, handful of days. Uh, but first we're going to kick things off talking about what the latest news is on the PlayStation 5. And as I said, it's three weeks away basically for both consoles. And uh, so generally what we're getting is just tons and tons of little stuff. And there, mm. there has been enough little stuff to keep talking about this week after week. And you can just see the marketing plans all snapping into place. This is all a plan. And of course, COVID probably threw some of that stuff off, but they probably just shifted it all. It's very smart the way both companies are doing things. It's it's keeping it front and center on Sifted every single day with at least one big story that people care about. Um, they're doing it right. They're doing a good job. And I would just say right now, I'm at about DEFCON 3 of hype. And that that's, there's one more level to go. And that's going to happen on launch day. But I am there. I am pumped. I Just the measuring and the shopping for an entertainment center and the TV, it's all just winding me up and getting me there. So I am getting excited. The new, getting the new TV and everything is like really the, the completion of 
just of the, ordering the, like, of the cycle my 2.1 cables yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah that's like the signifier that i am stepping into a new realm so yeah. i mean i I'd probably like i probably the excitement level stepped up a bit when i ordered the the hard drive cables yeah after i watched the digital foundry thing I'm like well i guess i'll get that sata yeah. ssd and, yeah. the, and the connector they use because they said that that was their best connector they had um so i'm like i'll just get those in preparation because i do want to see what a bunch of the, you know, I do want to play uh, Assassin's Creed Unity at 60 frames per second on the Xbox. I, you know, I want, you know, I could probably do that on my computer, but like there's something about doing it on the, on the, on the new system that like is a fun proof of concept. I don't think I'll play the whole game, but it's, I want to do that. I want to do some backwards compatible mess around with, uh, with the Xbox because there's not much else to do. <laughs> We're going to get to that as well but, later um, on in the show. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, but once you start buying the, the, the prep stuff, um, although I do remember a day when there was no prep stuff, you just bought the goddamn system. <laughs> That's true. But, um, we're in a different world now. So. Yes, we are. And we're assimilated into it at this point. So oh, yeah. I've just accepted it. Um, Davil124, thank you for Twitch Prime. McWomble, thank you for Twitch Prime. Hope you're doing well, man. Hope all you guys are doing well. It's been too long since I've seen you guys. So hope you guys are all hanging in there with COVID and all the other insanity that's going on right now. All right, let's and, talk. And Bunko, yes, I am getting Miles Morales Ultimate for the remaster because I, I actually have been wanting to replay Spider-Man, but I'm going to wait for that remaster. That's another thing that's been percolating up in me over the last week is how good the first Spider-Man was yeah. watching all this Miles Morales stuff. Um, anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, let's talk PS5. Uh, the big reveal this week was the PlayStation 5 user interface um now we pretty much know what xbox uh, series x what its interface is yeah. in fact they just updated yeah, we're, the we're pretty much looking we're at there. it our xbox yeah, it's ones. already there yeah. like if you have an xbox one you're already seeing what's coming and the main difference seems to be that like all the icons are rounded on the corners now yeah that, yeah. Was, that was the like big sifted. change <laughs> it looks yeah. like sifted honestly um so anyway we know pretty much what the ui looks like for xbox series x the rumors were that the ui on PS5 was going to stay the same. We got some report like weeks and weeks ago about that. That is not true. <laughs> no, I, I knew for a long time that like they were ditching the the at least the full cross menu bar thing. Although they I did fully. Assumed. Yeah, they but, have it uh, completely. Um, but they have completely revamped and overhauled the user interface for PlayStation 5. And now that you see now that you see it in action and what it does, they had to. <laughs> yeah. With the features that the console has and the things that they want to do with the console, they really had no choice. They had My to conspiracy control. mind finds it interesting that the account they use is a kill zone icon. <laughs> you don't like well, the that. last time you heard anything about that fucking IP. <laughs> Matt, of, of everything they showed in the new UI, what struck you the hardest? Like, what um, do you think is the coolest thing that we're going to get the most use out of? Like, I don't know if we're going to get the most use out of it because I need to kind of see how it works in reality. But like the game hint thing was a neat idea. Um, I feel uh, like we saw that with Stadia. Remember Stadia, Stadia was like had something like that. And I, I mean, <laughs> I look when when G4 ended, I ended up being contacted by several biz dev people who wanted to work on this or that or whatever in the run up to the new consoles. And there were people working on something like this for the PS4 and the, and the Xbox one that just never happened. Uh -huh. um, for whatever reason. I mean, my guess would be that the OSs were already, you know, giant hogs to the point that if you didn't build it, build the OS with that in mind as a feature from the beginning, all you're going to do is bog things down. So it wasn't feasible. But That's clearly why it has gotten slower over time than cross media bar. It wasn't built to mm -hmm. maybe be built upon as much as they had hoped. But that's an interesting thing. If that can actually work in a smart way and not be obtrusive and sort of be an assist more than an annoyance, like that's a that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, just because it would cut down on how often I need to have my laptop open in front of me while I'm doing so while I'm playing something. Now we should um, explain to people what it is for those who haven't seen sort of the yeah. media that Microsoft put out. It is basically while you're playing the game, you can hit the is it the Xbox button or is it the start button or the new button on the controller? I don't remember. I can't remember either. But you hit a button and an interface comes up and literally there are video walkthroughs mm -hmm. for that very specific point in the game that you're standing at. And it'll figure out where you are. It'll say, here it is. You want to watch it? I want to watch it. It'll literally show how to go through the section of the level. Um, now, one thing that I can that I've been considering since this happened is isn't this just going to shut down like a cottage industry on YouTube? Like there are a lot of YouTube channels that are just 100% that, you know, what, yeah, how I do mean, I get the, the gold key to open the purple lock? Like, 
I think it depends. Like I do find myself, you know, if I use videos for stuff like that, I do find myself going back to the same people a lot. The people I, who don't say anything, man. Right. The people who just like <laughs> the people who who don't like spend five minutes babbling about crap. Yeah. The people put it all in one video with timestamps, and the people who just they don't talk. They zoom in on the map. They zoom out. They walk that, to the thing. They look at the thing, and they pick it up. We're done. Like you know that's what? all I want. Those are like thirty seconds. I am totally fine watching a five second ad for that. Like yeah. the people who are like, "Hey, it's blah blah blah," and I've been playing this blah. It's like, no, bro. Where's the freaking key? I don't <laughs> care about you. I don't care about your dog. I care about the key. Where is it? Like it drives me bonkers. Hey guys, how you doing? Like, oh, so I've been playing this really great game, and I know like some people have <laughs> emailed me and told me that they're having trouble finding this one thing. So if we're gonna look at this one thing, uh, but first. Uh, one thing that's really good if you need to explain something well is Squarespace. It's, it's like just um, <laughs> I know. How'd you get a sponsorship know. for a 30 second Where's the Hidden Foozle yeah. video? We're actually seeing this feature right now in the B-roll. They're showing yeah. it to you guys right now. The timing has, has worked out well for this one. Um, and th the videos that they have in there, no BS. It's literally right. it just shows you going from where you need to go to where you need right. to well, end. They, they don't need ad revenue on right. those things. Yeah, they, they don't. don't. Um, so I can see, well, here's the thing. It's only on X are on PlayStation 5 right now. Mm -hmm. Xbox Series X may get it. So, look, the walkthrough YouTube industry isn't going to fold. But certainly, this is going to take a nice chink out of it, uh, out of the armor. And, you know, if Xbox eventually does develop this tech as well for Series X, then it could be bad. I mean, it could be mm -hmm. all Switch and PC games for this stuff going forward. So, um, I feel for those guys who have worked hard. I mean, those people work freaking hard. Guides are some of the worst content. Oh, yeah to create in the industry. The worst the worst segments I ever had to make were for cheap. It's the hardest work, it's the most time Endless. consuming work, and it generally pays really terrible. Like guides at GameSpot, we used to pay people like 200 bucks to write yeah. like game facts Nothing. guides. It's crazy. Um, so I did, the, general, I did the cheat that was entirely about Shadow of the Colossus. I played, had to play that game twice for that. So, I, I, so that was like, I must have put 40 some hours into do, into yeah. just playing and recording, let alone logging and writing. Like, And I, that was all for like, basically it would come out to about 18 minutes. Of no. television, it was. So I, yeah, nothing. exactly. So I do appreciate the hard work that these people put into it, and I feel mm -hmm. bad for them that it that it could be sort of going away. Um, also, Johnny Hurricane Sifter, Johnny Hurricane, he actually does walk through stuff. I don't know if Johnny's on the stream today, uh, but he do, he does this stuff like we like without the VO and all the crap. He just shows you what you want to see. Um, so anyway, I thought that was probably the coolest feature. I don't know how often I'll use it. I'm also wondering just how good it's going to be. I mean, they're showing it now. It's like easy to set that up. But if you're playing like a third party game is like, is EA going to pay a team of like basically YouTubers to go in and play their games and create all that? I don't know, Matt. Like I, mm -hmm. I think it's probably going to be confined mostly to first party stuff. Yeah. So I would think so. It's I mean, a cool feature, but asking a publisher to do that, that's a, that's a big ask. And who knows like what kind of deals like if, you know, if it did come to Xbox, um, would you know, Xbox's deal with EA with going with Game Pass playing it like would that only right. be on Xbox? Yeah, you know? yeah, it gets really complicated. Yeah. Yep, you're right. Um, so I thought that was really cool. I don't know how much I'll use it and I don't know how prevalent it's going to be once we actually have our PS5s. Um, the other thing, uh, activities what do you think about this, Matt? This I thought was, this honestly may be the coolest thing and the thing that I think I will use the most because basically they're kind of like achievements. They're like very specific goals within the game. But the cool part is, is you can look at the list and you can say, okay, I've completed these, 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 and these. Oh, I haven't completed this one. And you can select it and it will warp you right to the point in the game that you need to be at to complete it. Hmm. Again, it sounds so work intensive, but really freaking cool. Like, I don't know how game makers do that. I guess they just put triggers in their games at certain points when people reach those points. So that yeah, well, I mean, you can flag anything like the trick here. They're clearly using that, you know, the pipeline thing where you can load data yep. in pretty much instantly on this thing. Yep. So it's cool. Yeah, that seems like something that somebody came up with suddenly realized they could do yeah. with this hardware setup. And they're like, oh, we could do that. Oh, that's cool. Let's do that. Okay. So, that, yeah. Again, that seems like something like maybe more prevalent in first party titles. Um, yep. Who knows how Again. well optimized multi platform stuff will be for this system? Uh, yeah. We hope well, but 
Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I'm not... I've got my fingers crossed. I'll put it that way. <laughs> after mm. the PlayStation 3, PS4 was great, but after the PlayStation 3, I'm always going to be a little skeptical with uh, third party on Sony, at least out of the gate. That's just the way it's going to be, and they earned it. So um, what else was a part of the UI that they showed? Those are really the big ones. New share options. Mm-hmm. There's a new share button on the Series X controller, um, and the ex- sharing stuff is pretty freaking extensive. Um, the other thing I liked about it was how... You do not leave the game to do most of the stuff. Like mm-hmm. this interface just comes up over the game and you can start selecting. And this is true for pretty much all this stuff we've been talking about. You don't have to like go out back to the home screen, fiddle around with what you want to, and then go back to the game. Um, I think this stuff is way cooler than the suspend stuff that's been promoted out the yin yang over the last like two months. Um, it's really cool functionality and it's something that could only be done with an SSD and big pipelines. So it's next gen. It's stuff like this. I think that may end up impressing people more than the graphical leap, particularly if they don't have a good 4k TV. Um, but again, it's just this little stuff that just keeps adding up, um, week after week for both PlayStation and Xbox to be fair. And later on, we do have a topic on Xbox series X where we're going to go over all the latest stuff that they've revealed over the past seven days. Uh, what else? Um, some other things came out from PlayStation that I think some people may not be quite as happy about. Um, and at least at first, people were really angry about some of the stuff. Uh, the first thing is that the PlayStation 5, everybody knows the PS4 has had a fan problem. Uh, the, the OG PS4, to a certain extent, the PS4 Pro especially, that thing just sounds like a jet engine getting ready to take off from underneath your TV. It's a well-known issue. Sony's well aware of it. And it's so well aware of it that, one, it has gone the extra mile to make sure the PlayStation 5 is as as quiet as possible. But also, it is going to optimize the use of the fan by gathering data from people's PS5 APUs. Um, Now, that's not personal data. Like, it's they don't know if you have a disease or something like that from that information. Um, but it is still data that you have generated. So people are a little concerned about the privacy stuff there. Um, I don't think they should be. I think it's, I think the cause is, tr- is, is just and true. I think that there's a good reason for Sony to do it. I do not know if you can opt out of it if you want. My guess is that you probably will be able to. Yeah. Um, but then you're not contributing to making the fan better on PlayStation 5, which hopefully isn't a problem in the first freaking place. But we'll see. It does seem like it runs really quiet. All the uh, Japanese YouTubers that covered it, like you couldn't hear it running. So it sounds like it's not going to be an issue, but I like that Sony has a plan in place just in case it does, in fact, become a problem. So I am still not used to how big that thing is. I know it's gigantic, dude. It is just monstrous. Like, for instance, so we're, we're going to talk about a game a little later that I've been playing or I played yesterday. And uh, I capture all the footage here in this back bedroom, which is like my little office. Um, So I have to like move the PS4 from the living room back to here. When I want to play on the TV, I go back and bring it outside. And I was just thinking today when I took the PS4 out of here, I was like, doing this with the PS5 is going to (laughs) suck. It's so big and it's so heavy. It's like, like you can't, are you going to be able to throw your PS5 in like your shoulder bag and like take it with you somewhere? Like, I don't know. That need, that's, I think you're going to need like a gym bag. Yeah, like, I don't know that that's going to be a thing. Like every console I've ever owned, I've been able to just take a shoulder bag and just throw it in there yeah, and take it wherever I needed to go. You're going to need some with a frame. Yeah, it's going to need like one of those crazy like hiker backpacks yeah. with like the straps that go across the front. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's it's big and it's something you're going to have to consider for sure. Um, it's a big, It's probably the biggest console ever. So I don't think anyone is really ready to kind of deal with this until we have it in our hands and we're we're kind of figuring out how it's going to fit in our entertainment center or whether we're going to stand it up or lay it sideways, whatever. It's going to be a trip trying to figure it out. Um, let's see. The PlayStation 5's retail box was revealed this week in a Burger King ad. <laughs> Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. I mean, I saw the other Burger King thing with the bag and the sound, startup sound. Yep, so they gave them the startup sound, and then they ended up giving them the retail box. So the next The box that, crushed the king with its <laughs> no, sheer no, they're, mass. They're <laughs> doing giveaways, PS5 giveaways. So if you get a drink or whatever, mm. you get like a thing, and if you win, you get a PS5. Well, they were showing the people winning the PS5s, and they had mm. the box there, and they were like bowing down to it or whatever. It honestly looks almost identical to the PlayStation 3 box. It's mostly white. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but it's fine. Who cares? It's just a stupid box. And it's yeah, just you throw go. it out as soon as you're sure you that you it's throw not your broken. boxes out. Once I know that they don't, they, they work. Yeah, I don't. I keep all mine. That's, again, I don't have a home. So mm-hmm. like when I go to move, I don't want to just like throw all my consoles in something and let them get broken. I put them all back in their boxes, stack them up and then put those inside other boxes and I take really good care of them. So I, mean, I, do, I do that with my transformers, the, the high end stuff, but yeah. I, with all the consoles, you never have to move Kyle ever again. <laughs> no, but even when I did move, I just, you know, I just threw them in a shoulder bag and like I said, drove them over. <laughs> I don't like, well, you know, I moved across the country and right. it, it's different. But anyway, I have I, always carried most of my electronics personally, even if I used a moving company, like I, I would generally move my, my, my computer and my, my current gen consoles carefully myself. Yeah. When I retire a console, I put it back in this box and it gets stacked in this closet that's over my shoulder here. Uh, it's pretty cool actually to go in there and look now because I've lived in California for 20 years at all the consoles I've bought just since I lived here. It's pretty nuts. Uh, the thing I think that is going to anger people the most of the new details from PlayStation 5 from this week is that, and at first people did flip out over this, is that Sony revealed that the PlayStation 5 records voice chat for moderation purposes. And so mm-hmm. people initially were like, what? They thought Sony was recording everything and it was going back to some database somewhere and they're trying to find, like, filter it for bad words or whatever. That's not how it works. Um, basically, it's recording, it's on like a buffer. So it doesn't record everything. It always has like the last like 10 minutes or whatever of your voice chat. The reason they're doing it is so when you report someone else, and you're saying this person was acting like a jackass, that you have proof of it. Uh, Because think about it, from Sony's perspective before, you could be like, this guy has been tossing out racial slurs, he called my mom a name, Um, but what proof does Sony have that that person did that? They don't. So they'd have to either take the, the word of the person who's filing the report, or just ignore it. Well, now, if you want, if you report someone, you'll be able to tag the actual communications to your report, set, and that is sent to Sony, and then they can actually listen to the person saying what you're saying that they said, and then ban them if they need to. So I like it. No, I don't ever like someone just recording everything I do or whatever. I think I got over that with the Connect. Mm-hmm. So I'm not that concerned about that stuff, but I am concerned about toxic people online. Um, and I played some, the, some more of the uh, Call of Duty Cold War beta over the weekend. Oh my God. I like I, One thing I'm glad about, that game has a mute all toggle in it. <laughs> I had to mute all of them. Anyone that used a headset was awful. So I can see why Sony's doing it. I think it's a pretty smart way to do it. I understand the privacy concerns. I understand why some people may be upset and may not like it, but I do think it's for the better good. What say you, Matt? Yeah, I mean, it's probably, I, you gotta come up with some solution for the toxicity online. Like I haven't, and it doesn't really affect me because I haven't, I don't remember the last time I voice chatted on anything. Yeah. But um, yeah, they were coming through my TV speakers because I had not turned yeah. it off. I didn't have a headset on. All the crap was coming out. My wife was like, what the? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yep, welcome to online gaming. Usually you can't hear it because I have a head for headset on. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she got a little taste of uh, the online gaming community. I was I was a little embarrassed, but uh, that's the way it is. So I think Sony's doing handling it about the best way that you can. I can't really think of another way for them to do it. Mm-hmm. Like maybe it won't be super effective in the end, but it's worth a shot. Yeah, I guess. it's better than doing nothing. Doing nothing is not going to fix anything. So at the very least, they can try this. If it's not working, if consumers really hate it and they're really angry, they can get rid of it or they can tweak it. But at least they're trying to do something, and I appreciate that. Um, and then here's one that also might dig into some of the fans a little bit. PT, not backwards compatible on PlayStation 5. No shit. <laughs> yeah, Konami dropped that bomb. Um, are you surprised that PT isn't going to be playable? No. Like, how would you even get it on there? I know. It's like you can't. You can't even get the file onto the hard drive no. of the PlayStation 5. No, it's like, I don't understand the, I mean, a part of it's, I know, because it's a scarcity thing, because you can't get it anymore, and it's like, it wasn't that good. Like, it's, no, it's I, fine. I got bored. I it's played cool. it for like 10 minutes, and I was like, okay. <laughs> but like, I don't understand the, the furor around this thing. Like, I, I have it on, on the, P, I have it on my PS4 Pro, like, I I have it there in case I want it, but like, well, My hard drive died, and I lost it. I, had to replace I don't see wanting drive. it, really. So Yeah, I, I, 
I didn't shed any tears. Although I still have, for some reason, I refuse to delete the notification in my notifications of like that I got it. I don't know why. I always see it and I just leave it there. Uh, But anyway, so it's not going to transfer over, which really brings up a, a point for me is that's one of the few reasons to keep a PlayStation 4. Can you think mm-hmm. of another, Matt? Because a lot of people sell their consoles when they get a new one. I typically don't. I typically keep all my consoles, but I am really struggling to, to find any reason to keep my PlayStation 4 Pro. Can you think um, of any? I mean, not really, unless you really want to play Robinson the Journey. Yeah, um, I mean... I mean, I guess for now, like... You can hang on to it if you're a big VR person because there's no, you know, the the, the adapter That's doesn't true. exist yet. That's a good point. Okay. Um, but it really seems like a lot of it is is being made redundant yeah. in pretty much every important way. Yeah, which I'm totally fine with. I have no problem yeah, with that. I mean, that's, I got, that's, a, that's an upgrade <laughs> to me. I got my money out of my PS4s and then some. <laughs> I'm totally cool with sending it out the pasture. I'm also totally cool with selling it and getting like 100 or 200 bucks to port, put towards like my HDMI 2.1 cables or whatever because they're not cheap, unfortunately. And, you, and here's another thing. You do need to get all new HDMI cables for 2.1 um, if you are going to get a TV that's 2.1. Uh, just a note there. Um, and then the final update on PlayStation 5 from this week is that accessories are out in the wild. So the DualSense controller, there's been a bunch of photos posted on Twitter from Walmart and a couple other retail stores uh, that the controllers are out there already. The headsets are out there already. Uh, this is really early, Matt. Like I remember back like the Dreamcast, like a week before the games were in stores, you go buy games. Uh, there have been controllers that have appeared in stores like a few days before a launch, not like three or four weeks. It's like it literally almost a month before the PS5 launches. It depends. I mean, I I remember buying uh, like a couple of N64 games well before. Yeah, uh, at Toys R Us, I remember buying, yeah. buying them too. Yeah, I was afraid they would sell out. Um, yeah, I, I, had, I had the games before this. I got this. I didn't get the system until Christmas, but I was I got, buying. I like, got Pilot Wings before the system came out. Yeah, I got Mario sixty four before it came out. Like it was, it was, it was a while. It was already it was, gone. I had to get yeah. Mario on launch day, and I was very happy that they had it. And uh, of course, I didn't get to play it till Christmas when I got the system. But like, right. I was like, I, like the shortages on those things were so pronounced that I was like, oh, I was going to buy them when I see them, and I saw them real early. I was like, okay, and so I did actually play it i guess at my friends is because he got a one at launch oh, okay. so, but he couldn't find mario so i'm like well, i got mario like let's do that so, you know. <laughs> wonder teams act wonder twins act yeah it works out perfect so sometimes it happens like i it's uh it's unusual i, I feel i don't recall seeing like the official accessories that's like I've, i remember seeing like mad cat stuff that soon yeah but not like the first party stuff me that either soon. i mean it's good to see though i mean it shows yeah. that their production lines are already up and running and running well um, it means that we're, it, no one's probably going to be struggling to get a second controller on launch. It also day. says to me that they were originally launching this thing in October. Yeah. Like, I've awesome. always held to an Oct- like a late October release for this thing, and I think it was supposed to be that originally. Because I don't think they... I still don't think they would, by choice, want to launch two days after the competition. Yeah, I don't like, think anybody That's would. real close. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, the production lines in China yeah. like, with COVID and everything. And, and like, shipping and stuff. And look, they're going to win anyway. Like, they're, you know, yeah. it's not going to be a, a problem for them as much as it might be a problem for Xbox. So I think they're both going to sell out that week. No problem. But... Um, I am I you know I still hold to my initial impression that Watch Dogs was supposed to align with the PS5 launch it at the end of October. It makes sense. Um, and now you're right. Now that the peripherals are going out into the retail chains, it makes sense. It mm-hmm. definitely because those sense. those can be a separate retail like distribution pipeline than like oh, the yeah. main hardware. And you, a lot of times you just can't like like you're already like right now uh, tangentially um, the action figures for the Eternals movie are coming out in stores because that was supposed to be out at the beginning of November. Um, and you <laughs> it's can't like all stop the master, that. It's like all the Halo Infinite stuff yeah. that's going no, on Halo right Infinite now. Stuff it's like all, all the, the, Black, the, all the Black Widow merch came out in May. Yeah. You know, all the Wonder Woman stuff's going to be out. Can't it, stop yeah. it. No, it's like, and, and the worst part is like, you look at it, it's like, oh, I guess, I guess that's what happens yep. <laughs> in the movie. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but, um, so. but I think that's maybe what happened here is like you, you know, the the accessories and the and the yeah, the they're like why stuff keep is, them? Like let's just get them out because we're gonna need to make more yeah. and ship more. So and like you're probably gonna have, you'd probably have to pay more to like store them for a while. Yeah. So just like let them go through the pipeline, hit stores, and 
do what you're going to do. Like yep. you're going to you're going to make the money one way or the other. So why yep. not? Absolutely. So yeah, so far the photos have shown the headset and the controller, but not the camera yet, not the remote yet. But we just saw the remote. No, it's you mean our B roll. -roll. Yeah. No, I'm talking about its stores. They're not oh, for sale no. yet. It's just so far it's just been the controller and the headset that people have seen in stores. Uh, and then obviously you have those two other things that are coming as well. That'll I've never had a remote for a game console. Never... I just got one because I cut the cord and I'm using mm. YouTube TV on my Xbox One. So I got an Xbox One remote and it's the biggest, and it's the officially licensed one, and it is the biggest piece of junk. Yeah. The reviews on Amazon were five out of five. Can't believe how cheap it's awful. I'm like, man, the standards on Amazon are so low. <laughs> You're out of their paid reviews. I don't know. But yeah, uh, I yeah, can't I, like I can't remember like a couple of times, like we have a weekly movie night and like every once in a while, you know, we we watch stuff on various things and a couple of things I have are, you know, through the TV, but there's some apps that just aren't on the TV. So I use one of the consoles, like either the mm -hmm. PS5 or the or the Xbox. And whenever I've watched stuff on the Xbox. Um, which I believe I have, I think I mainly use Hulu on that because um, the Xbox, for a long time, the Xbox Hulu app did not play properly on my setup. And every time the the interface for playing stuff and also for playing like discs on the PS4 is so unintuitive on the controller that every once in a while I'm like, maybe I should buy a universal remote. <laughs> so a, and I'm like, that's that's how they get you. Like, like that, <laughs> you did that on purpose. You made using controllers suck on purpose. So I'd buy your stupid remote. Now, now, now I'm not doing it. No, yeah. I'm not doing it. I just feel weird not using a TV remote to watch TV. I don't know what it is. Like just having it there in your hand, flipping through channels. Like it just feels weird with a controller. And controllers are bigger and bulkier, and you can't you can't operate a controller with one hand. That's the important part, really. Um, gonna, so I just it was like twenty bucks, and it wasn't worth twenty bucks. It was literally it probably cost them four dollars to make. I it. mean, my remote is as easily as big as one of my controllers, but it's one of those big you universal have a things. or whatever. It's a, and it's a, it's a control four thing controls everything in the, in the, in the Same room. Thing though, basically. It's like hooked into the home Multi network basically. Remote. Yeah. yeah. Um, those, are, those are cool. Cause all, yeah. Cause everything, like a lot of the, the, the AV stuff is in the garage, you know, like a stack, like in a, in a thing in the garage. And so like I need the remote controls the stuff in there. So I have to go into the garage to change like the audio output and stuff. Um, but it's pretty neat. Uh, it's just one of those things I'm not I, early on. I was like, remote has a screen. That's weird. <laughs> like, it's like, can I watch the TV on the yeah. remote? <laughs> I don't even need a TV anymore. And they program. That's the other thing is like they programmed the guys who set the, all my, set all my, you know, low, low voltage stuff up, set up the remote and stuff. So it's all labeled with what I was going to use for each input. So there's one is PlayStation and switch and, and one labeled Steam when I thought I'd use the Steam the Steam box the Steam Link thing uh -huh. uh, and Xbox and I'm like well I I, I guess the new systems are going to have to go on the same inputs because I don't know how to change <laughs> the names of these things so yeah. that's, that's, that yeah. HDMI two is going to be PlayStation forever that is my receiver you can change the names of your inputs and I've already yeah. changed mine to PS five and Xbox I'm sure you can change well I'm actually lucky that they didn't put the numbers on them like they didn't yeah. put Xbox one or PS well, my Pioneer 4. receiver actually on the display will say PlayStation five Xbox. this is like auto detected no I have I can just, just in. type in what I want it to display yeah mine the remote just said they just put in PlayStation, so it can be any PlayStation. That's that's good. That remote's good that's for the fine. PlayStation Nine. Yeah, exactly. Xbox, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's it for the latest PlayStation Five news. As always, every week we're going to keep you guys up on the latest from both the next gen consoles. And like I said earlier, we're going to talk about Xbox Series X here in a couple topics. Uh, next, we're going to talk about. Sega's 60th anniversary again. Uh, the first time we talked about it was we talked about the Game Gear Micro, which is basically this huge cash grab that Sega released in Japan. They're these little itty bitty mm -hmm. game gears uh, that have like three or four games. And there's like a few of them and each in each one has a different collection of games on it. The reviews that now that they've been released in Japan, the reviews have been abysmal. They're like terrible. You can't play them. They're basically just a novelty. So you can't see them like they. Yeah. They're it's just ridiculous. Novel. I mean, That's look, I'm a big Game Gear fan. I had one when I was younger and loved it and played it a lot, played a bunch of stuff on it. Like I would sit, I would sit with my in high school, I'd sit with my girlfriend and we'd we'd play Game Gear games back and forth. We'd hand it back and forth and play it that way. Like if you put out a decent like Game Gear nostalgia item, like I am all over that shit. But, but that was not, not it. No. Not <laughs> so at that all. flopped and, and no one cares about it. And so Sega's next program uh for its 60th anniversary was this week. And Essentially, what it did was it released 
an old unfinished reboot of Golden Axe from 2012 and just gave it away on Steam, hmm. um, which sounds cool. You're like, okay, they tried to reboot Golden Axe. It didn't work. And oh boy, did it not work. <laughs> Watch this B-roll to see how it did not work. And it didn't work, but they're going to give it to me anyway, just for me to check out. And that's exactly what Sega did. So you could, and it was for one day only. You can't get it now. It's gone. You'll, you can't get it. Uh, but for one day only, you can go to Steam, you can download it, and you're seeing B-roll of it right now, obviously. And everything was like, oh, that's cool. That was a good idea. And everyone was kind of happy about it. And they're like, the game stinks, but who cares? They gave it away. And then one of the people who actually worked on the game spoke up and said, hey, 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 wait a minute. This game was created under some of the most extreme crunch I've ever seen. And this guy has been in the industry for decades, so he's seen it. And he said that it was literally the worst crunch he had ever experienced. The Sega, Sega were basically like slave drivers um, trying to get them to finish the game. And then it ultimately didn't work and all their work was for nothing. And so he was very angry that a product of crunch became a marketing tool for Sega. Mm -hmm. Okay, Matt, how do you feel about this? Um, I mean, I sympathize with him. Like, I don't, it's also like you look at it and you're like, for this? Yeah, like this, this, there was this crunch they, on this game. Well, like, what in the world? Two days. <laughs> yeah, like what in the world was so like important about this game that they wanted to do that with it? Like, like what was know. what was what was the the mass like timeliness demand for a Golden Axe? reboot like it doesn't make any sense well like, i mean look i remember actually that era and people were asking for a golden axe reboot back then um now they probably don't care anymore and sure, probably wouldn't even ask why would you need, why would you thing. need it in why would you need it in such a hasty manner that you do that to a team it's very i just can't understand strange. looking at that game how there was any crunch involved it's nowhere near look the whole game takes three minutes to finish like how can i don't understand like I don't want to say that the guy is embellishing or it's sour grapes or whatever, but this seems like a stretch to me, Matt. It doesn't I, seem like a stretch to me at all. Like, there's a lot more that like goes I into a game. Like, I believe he crunched, but... Yeah. There's a lot more that goes into a game than just what it looks like. Like, there's 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 a lot of work behind the under the hood and behind the scenes. I mean, and, I know that. I've been working as a games journalist yeah, for but 25 like, years. But just because this is not a good game doesn't mean that they didn't work, you know, three months or four months straight on it or something. But I would have, uh, I would gather that's probably exactly the amount of time that that game was worked on, like mm -hmm. total three months. Yeah, and who knows how much, much there might be? At. There might also be more of it that wasn't really playable that they didn't put in this free release. It's like, possible. You know, yeah, so I'm sure the game was took longer to finish in terms of you know concept. Yeah, uh, but like you know, that might just be the stuff that they didn't have to polish up at all, and we're sort of like this is good enough. Um, <laughs> they definitely they got I mean, that good, one wrong. <laughs> I mean, good enough for free. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I'm saying back then, like if they were trying to polish the game up for yeah. Some this, I mean, I don't know what the the impetus on this was. Like, I you know, the Golden Axe, all the Golden Axe reboots have done poorly in general, yeah. and like, like this looks like something that would have been on like Xbox Live Arcade, and yeah. I mean, it looks like a an indie game, honestly. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, so do you think the guy had the right to raise a stink over it? And do you think Sega was in the wrong for doing this? Because I don't. Like, Sega paid them to work. Sure, they probably worked long hours and maybe didn't get paid for, for some of them. But they did pay them to work on it. And it is Sega's property. Um, yeah, I mean, Sega has the right to do it. But I think he has the right to say this is what actually happened and yeah. and be heard on it. And he was. Uh, it's, and it's not like they made money on it, really. Well, the other weird thing, too, is Sega said that they talked to other developers who worked on it and they were cool with it. But then this guy says, I don't know what they're talking about. It was me and one other dude and they didn't talk to me and they didn't talk to him. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who they talked to. So. There might be, and then Sega like changed the verbiage on the landing page on Steam to acquiesce to the complaints, and that's pretty much all it did. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. Like, I really don't think Sega, Sega definitely didn't do anything intentionally wrong. It wasn't trying to take a dig at the people who worked on it. It had this old thing lying around that fans might be interested in. It was its 60th anniversary, and they were like, let's give it to the fans. Um, yeah, I mean, it's important to point out that like the work practices were not. Uh, kosher, but like it is work for hire. They own it. They can do whatever they want with it. Yeah. So, so I don't fault Sega for this at all, to be honest with you. Um, even the, the way they changed like the verbiage on Steam, 
I didn't even understand why they did that. I guess they tried to soften the language a little bit more because they were like snarky about it. They were they called it like janky, some broken, something else. And I guess that's what the guy took umbrage with was that they mm -hmm. called it janky. I don't know. The whole thing is just weird. Um, and it, I mean, it looks janky to me, but like, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I think you, I think we could both agree that it is janky. And I think Sega has it right. But I think he was offended because he's like, oh, yeah, well, I work crunch. And then you call what I did janky. I guess I can understand. It yeah. Much. I mean, just because you work hard on something doesn't mean it turns out it's well. Good. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I can tell you how many things I've worked on in my life for a long time that I just had to trash in the end because I was like, this isn't working. So. That's just the way creativity works. You know, you come up with an idea, sometimes it comes to fruition and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but, you know, I, it's weird for this guy to come back eight years later. It's like, he's like the ex-boyfriend who's still pissed off at, at the girlfriend like eight years later. And you're like, mm -hmm. bro, you gotta get over it, man. You gotta move on. <laughs> so I found it interesting. It, I thought it was cool what Sega tried to do. Uh, it kind of blew up in their face. They ended up with egg on their face a little bit. Uh, I liked what they're trying. They're also doing something else with, I think, Yakuza before it's all said and done for the 60th anniversary. Yeah, uh, I think there's like a Streets of Rage clone with them, with the Yakuza yeah, characters or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and I think that's also like an old game that just got mm -hmm. put, swept under the rug, and they're going to roll it out and let everyone check it out. So I like what Sega's trying. The Game Gear was a bust, and pretty, pretty much a cash grab. I think that's the one thing that bothers yeah. me a little bit. Although, like the rest of Sega seems to be aware of that, since we didn't get a U.S. release or an European release of it. Like they know. Yeah. That, it was a, that was a very weird move. They're like, we'll just con Japan. <laughs> It'll be <Yeah>. okay. Like, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, Stolte69, thank you for Twitch Prime, man. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so anyway, uh, you can't get it, unfortunately. So watching the B-roll that we just ran on the show, that's probably as close as you're going to get to Golden Axed. I do love how, <laughs> how they retitled it uh, mm. appropriately for a canceled Golden Axed game. So there you go. That's Golden Axed. Uh, next, we're going to talk about something I hinted at earlier when we were talking about HDMI 2.1. Uh, and the reason I've mentioned HDMI 2.1 is because if you want 4K at 120 frames per second, you have to have HDMI 2.1. Your TV has to have it. If, you, if you're running your stuff through your receiver, your receiver has to have it, and the device has to have it. Well, obviously, the good news is both Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 have HDMI 2.1. Most TVs still do not. Um, you have to look for TVs that have 2.1. And then some of them will have one port that's 2.1 and the rest will be 2.0. Some like one port that's 2.1 and the rest 1.4. Uh, so when you're buying TVs, make sure that you check that stuff out. It's, it's very, very important, but maybe not as important as I thought. Um, so this week, Ubisoft announced that Watch Dogs Legion, which is a game that both Matt and I have kind of earmarked to play on Xbox Series X instead of mm -hmm. PlayStation 5, is going to run at 4K, which is great, but at 30 frames a second. Uh, so we were talking just a minute ago about 4K, 120 frames per second. This is a Generation 8 game running on generation nine hardware and the game still can't run at four no, forget 4k 120 it can't run at 4k 60. Mm -hmm. matt uh, at this so at first i was like okay 4k 120 when's it gonna happen maybe it happens with like big budget games in like year two or year three indie games probably will get those in 4k 120 right out of the gate now I don't, i'm not so sure matt um this is a um, th this is, do not ever expect 120 to be standard of any kind ever. The only time you, here's here's my prediction. You will only see the 120 thing on competitive multiplayer. Um, that makes on, sense. You know, if you make like a like a like Call of Duty, might aim for that at some mm -hmm. point. Um, when it comes to stuff like Watch Dogs, which is something like a like a single play, more single player, like some sort of boutique world experience, you're going to see them put all that effort into the environmental stuff and the detail and the bells and whistles. I mean, this this 4K 30 frame mode is with ray tracing on. It's with all yep. the all the stuff turned on. It's like the prettiest you can possibly make the game, and that's going to drag your frame rate down to 30. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a performance mode that gives you like a 60 frame option. Um, with, they with didn't like probably, say that. With probably, there are multiple resolution modes in the game. I think you'll, you'll probably have one with that, that runs at 60 that like turns some stuff off. Maybe the ray tracing is not on, like stuff like that. Um, I think the I, I, as you've said in the past, I think having those options is going to be more and more common in this generation yeah. 
because you can do that and, and sort of cater to what people prefer to have. But I think 4K 120 is definitely a kind of blue sky optimistic, like this is the best of all possible world situation. And I don't think you're going to see it outside of things like, like something of the equivalent of like Counter-Strike. You know, yeah. like that's where the frame rate matters is where is where people want frame rate over over graphics for the most part uh, and stuff like like Ubisoft's open world stuff or like kind of more single player focused stuff. I think you're, you're going to see similar frame rates to what we had in previous gen. Matt, my concern, though, is that, again, this is a last gen game, you know, built the polygons, everything built for last generation. They cannot get that running at higher than 30 frames per second. So what happens with the games that are built for next gen, that do use a lot more geometry, that do uh, use that, a, they're going to run better. You think because that, because they're going to be because they're going to yeah they're going to be built for the hardware and this was not and so they're and I was I I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some like because uh, there is a next gen update coming for this thing like later in November mm -hmm. yeah. so it wouldn't surprise me if you get a better perform better performance out of that because I I think and I, I don't think we have any confirmation one way or the other on this. I think developers got their hands on the final hardware on these systems like later than usual. Um, so there was a point at which they just like, we just got to make this stuff. And this a lot of this... Well, they're I think, probably just is, building on PC specs at yeah, first. Yeah, and I think a lot of this is going to be coming in hot, um, you know, in terms of like getting it ready for the new systems. Um, and also like, um, uh, what was that, like you can bog down a cutting edge PC graphics card by just turning all the settings up on certain things. And that's just what's going to happen. And, and, and it doesn't mean that the game's not built for it. It mean the hardware is weak. It just means that stuff's not quite optimized for it. And people don't know how to work with it yet. That was like back when I first built the, um, you know, the new, uh, the new computer for Witcher two, that was cutting it. That was like, there wasn't, you could not build a stronger computer at the time Witcher two came out and I built a computer for that. And you turn super sampling on, on that thing. It, tank to like 10 fps yeah. like it's it's just how it was then nothing was prepared to kind of run on in that way I'm just so i don't i don't think the comparison like oh they built it on on this hardware to and they're now they're turning the settings up and it's affecting the frame rate on the new hardware like i don't think that that is a one-to-one -one comparison but matt on xbox in particular that's how it works that's mm -hmm. what it's all about it's all about being able to play scale up that game that's its whole USP. That's its unique selling proposition. Yeah, but they're still not built for the for the hardware uh, configuration. I mean, do you and think maybe Soft is going to build a brand new engine? I don't. Well, the engine isn't isn't the problem there. Um, it's it's you can you can tweak that stuff and use different tools to do that. Like there's there's you know you, you can run Morrowind and you can run Skyrim on the same engine. Like that, the engine doesn't dictate that kind of stuff really. Um, what I think matters more is how you build the game in pre-production and how that you know what you're building it for. I think the, the bigger problem is going, I, I, I would expect to see a shift where you, and this may not be a problem necessarily, um, but it might affect things in terms of like how fast early adoption happens um, or be affecting people in terms of how fast people are adopting early the, the new systems. You will probably see a shift where like the new stuff, the upcoming stuff in the next year starts to run better on the new systems and runs like trash on the old systems. Like they start to deprioritize making the old, even though the ones on the old systems are going to have still much larger audiences for quite some time. I think so they'll still run. They'll just run like crap is what you're yeah. saying. I mean, I think you're going to be looking at, you know, kind of a 1080p or, or checkerboard with 30, if mm -hmm. you're lucky sort of situation. Um, especially as you sort of moving, putting more and more bells and whistles and you're eventually going to hit a point where like, you've got some under the hood stuff on new games that just, you can't make work on the old consoles, not because it looks too good, but because it's just doing something that requires the fast access of an SSD and you just don't have that. Or the GPU stuff. just doesn't have. Yeah. That's whatever. the thing that I think is like, I think even though you're dealing with the Xbox is less of a specialized hardware setup. I think the problem is that like that SSD makes a big difference and yep. they may or may not have had time to go through their code and go through their game and figure out how to, how to place all that and optimize it properly. So that like you really get that fast access, especially in an open world game, which is just constantly streaming information. So I would say, let's see what this thing looks like in like a month or two months mm -hmm. uh, on the next gen systems. But right now that's not really raising any red flags for me. It definitely sends up a flag. Um, I'm waving it gingerly, but it, it does send up some alarms for me. Um, I mean, also like, let's, you can even go back to the same, the same series. Let's look at what Watch Dogs 1 looked like when that came out. Yeah. And that, that certainly was a disappointment in terms of mm -hmm. what we were expecting from what was shown originally, but it also didn't dictate what the generation had to offer 
in terms of performance or graphics. So, and there were, I mean, there was a lot of concern over that at the time. It's like, oh, is this what next gen is going to look like? Watch Dogs 1, like that's what we're going to get. And no, we got way better stuff. We got stuff that really lived up to what we were expecting. That just wasn't it. Well, we got it on PS4. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know when the last time is that you've booted up the OG Xbox One, but let me tell you, playing games on the original Xbox One now is like a joke. Oh, yeah. Well, the old, the original Xbox One is. And these are games that are made for Xbox One. Yeah. So what's going to happen Xbox, with Series I mean, X? <laughs> what the well, that's, I don't think... I mean, Series S is a whole other can of worms on that. Um, series... I mean, the Xbox One... The original Xbox One was built by people that didn't know what they were building for. Yeah. Um, you know, they're trying to build a... They just basically built a cheap PC. That's all you know, it is. And they're trying to build a multimedia box, and they had more of an eye toward... You know, they, I think the people that, that put the hardware together for the original Xbox One were more interested in the in the cable pass-through feature than the fact that it could play video games. Yeah. You know? Well, they said, what, the, the word TV, like, 18 times yep. or something during the E3 press conference? Yeah. Yep. So they definitely had a different angle. Like, there. sure, Fable doesn't run very well, but look, you can watch TV. sports. <laughs> TV. ESPN is here. <laughs> I mean, they really did that. That's yeah. what how their press conference was. They're like, yeah. I mean, ESPN was there, if I remember correctly. They were. They yeah, that they the whole segment of it, and yeah. pretty much the whole gaming world just went. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I guess what I'm getting at is the 4K 120, it's not happening, Matt. No, I mean, it'll be years before you got to worry about HDMI 2.1. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's really what I was trying to get at, is that I've been talking about HDMI 2.1 for the last couple of weeks on the show, but you really don't need it. HDMI no. 2.0 is good for 4K 60, so mm. and so that's fine. And most TV... Like it's good the new consoles yeah. have it. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's, it's future-proof. Future, future it's a nice future-proofing. It doesn't add anything to the cost of the system, really. Like, it's, it's, it's all fine. It's all there. But yeah, it's... Like no one needs to run out and buy a new TV. I mean, you're buying a new TV for a lot of reasons other than HDMI yeah. 2.1. But if yeah. I'm sitting here with my 4K OLED and I'm just like, oh, I don't have HDMI 2.1. What am I going to do? It's it. like you don't need to do anything. Like, no. I, I promise. Yeah. Yep. And all TVs now have 2.0. So yeah. you don't even have to worry about like researching that. Any new TV has at least 2.0. And probably from now going forward, any new models will have 2.1. And let's not, I mean, I, I also, I mean, I have never been a huge frame rate stickler as long as the frame rate's steady. Yeah. Um, as long as it doesn't jump around and make me. Just like major releases running with bells and whistles on at 60, like which I expect like a lot of first party stuff to do. Like that's a huge step already. Like I don't need to sit here and start worrying about what 120 is going to be. Like it, it's, you know, that's that's overkill in a way that I just don't have any interest in um, outside of like, yeah, I understand why people play it like 144 for like Overwatch or something that needs I like do. On my PC, my, I have 100, 144 yeah. marks. Per but do I need to play Watch Dogs Legion at that frame rate? Not really. I like, mean, I'll say this. You do kind of get be nice. used to it after a while, like playing at that frame rate. Yeah. But here's the other thing, though, about my TV in particular is that a lot of people are buying the smaller ones to use as a computer monitor. Right. I watched last night a comparison between an IPS monitor and that TV, and the TV destroyed the IPS monitor. Mm -hmm. They're getting way better. And but in that, if you want to use it on your PC, absolutely, you need yeah. 2.1. Although that situation, that's where you have to worry about burning. Yep. They gonna, yeah, and in fact, the review does mention that too. Um, but yeah, you have to be careful because okay. I mean, I have an IPS monitor, and the bottom tray of windows is burned into my IPS monitor. Mm -hmm. And I thought IPS could not get burned in. Oh, it can. The monitor I'm looking at right now has the windows tray permanently burned into it. So mm -hmm. it it can happen to even IPS if you really abuse it. And I do abuse mm -hmm. this monitor. Let me tell you. That's one um, of the reasons I uh, I make the the windows tray hide. Yeah, I, I drive me uh, the way I work. I drive me nuts having to wait for it to pop up every time. So, <laughs> whatever. I sacrificed a monitor. It's all good. It's all worth it in the end. Yeah. Uh, but the point we're making is that I feel like I've been banging the drum on HDMI 2.1, especially last week. And I just want to let you guys know you don't have to get it. Like, I don't even know if you're going to need it at all for this gen. I'm happy you might to. Not. Get uh, you may not. I'm happy to get a TV that does support it because I'm going to have this TV for like a decade. And I guarantee Gen 10. Yeah, it's going to hit it easily. So um, I don't buy TVs and like keep them for a year. Like buy plasma I've had for like nine or 10 years and I still love it. So um, I'm trying to future proof myself. And that's what you're doing with HDMI 2.1 right now. In a couple of years, that'll probably change. But by then, every TV will have it anyway. So just wanted to get that out there to you guys. Um, this was an eye opener for me because I really thought like Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, if any game is going to run in 4K 120, or even 4K 60, those are the games. They're last-gen games that are being up-res. So 
I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe you're right. Maybe when the quote unquote next gen updates come, maybe they're better. Um, but for me right now, a last gen game. I mean, let's be honest, Matt. Barely able to run in 4K. 4K 30. That's the bottom. That's the minimum that you can get. So seeing last gen games hit that bare minimum. It makes me nervous, but at the same time, like you, I've been around the block and I have seen console launches where the games look terrible. Look at PlayStation 3. Look at the, how the games looked at that on, at launch and how they looked mm -hmm. at the end of its life cycle. So I've seen enough to know that I'm not like dooming these next gen consoles to 4K 30, but to me, it is a little concerning, but we'll see. Um, I can't wait to get this stuff to really give it a, a workout and see what the truth actually is. So we'll see. Um, and as people in chat have been bringing up um, ray tracing is really the X factor. They're right. I mean, when, mm -hmm. if you turn ray tracing on or off, you're basically chopping like roughly 30 frames off mm -hmm. of what you can display. I mean, I know that's not perfect, but that's my fuzzy math. Um, so is ray tracing worth 30 frames, Matt? It is. Uh, it can be. I think for most games it is. Yeah. For mm -hmm. shooters, maybe not, but for just your typical third person action adventure action RPG, I think it absolutely is a worthy trade off. Okay, let's move on. We're going to talk now about Xbox Series X. Last week, we did them both together, but both Series X and PlayStation 5 had enough news on their own this week that they're getting their own topic. So we're going to talk about Series X, not as much as PlayStation 5, mind you, but some pretty big stuff uh, launched this week, the biggest of which is the launch lineup for Xbox Series X. They finally finalized it. Um, this week, we kind of knew where the launch lineup was tracking, but then they finalized it this week. There are going to be 30 games available or playable on Xbox Series X on day one. Um, instead of going through all 30 games, which would be absurd, um, I went through the 30 and I plucked out the 10 games that people will care the most about. Because I'll just be perfectly honest with you, 20 of the 30 games are just indies. And look, some of them may end up being great. Some of them may end up becoming game of the year. Who knows? But you guys don't care about those right now. I plucked out 10 that you care about, and I had problems getting to 10. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, obviously, the first one is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, we just talked about that. That is going to have smart delivery. And then, Matt, you said that, is that also getting the next-gen update like a month later? Or is it just um, Watch Dogs? I don't know. Uh, I think Watch Dogs Legion said something about some kind of November update. And um, I might be imagining that, but I swear to God there was something about how there was going to be... Because there was something about how like the PS5 version of Watch Dogs... Legion was going to be available at launch for PS5, mm -hmm. but then you still got, if you just, so if you just wanted to buy the PS5 version on the PS5, you could, mm -hmm. or if you already had the PS4 version, you will get the free update to the pre PS5 version as long as you either load it in on your, on your account digitally, or if you have the disc version, you have to put the disc into the PS5 and it will give you the update for free to the PS5 version. So there's clearly a difference between you know, running the PS4 version on the new hardware and a PS5 dedicated version that maybe has some optimization changes or something. So and I'm sure I assume that's what they're talking about in this thing about 4K 30. But I'm betting there's going to be other like resolution modes or or performance modes if you, you if you can live without ray tracing or something. Now, um, yeah. Now keep in mind um, when we say smart delivery, that means that you can buy the Xbox One version, and then when you get your Xbox Series X you have the game on your new console as well. Mm -hmm. And that's important to keep in mind because every one of these games we're going to talk about yeah. is different. <laughs> and some smart have delivery, smart and watch, delivery, some don't. And Smart Delivery and Watch Dogs Legion means that there's no... Like, there isn't a thing like with the PS5 where you have to put the... You know, it'd, be, right. it'd be the same thing, basically, but uh, PS5 pretty much doesn't have a name for it. Yep. Uh, which is surprising. Yeah, the, the, well, only <laughs> Xbox only Xbox has a buzzword for <laughs> yeah, your game smart. works on the new system. You should do that. Smart um, delivery. Yeah. Now keep in mind, again, that I picked these 10 games out of the 30 to be the 10 that I thought would have the most interest with you folks. Next, Borderlands 3 also has smart delivery. So if you already have Borderlands 3 on Xbox, you also have it for Xbox Series X. You just didn't know it yet. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So if you've already bought Borderlands 3, when you get your Xbox Series X, you can download it again. You'll be able to play it in 4K and whatever else they managed to pull off from that game. But that's an old game, Matt. That game's been out for a while. Um, I can look at the traffic for that game on Sifted. It 
there was a lot of interest in that game before it launched. And then after it launched, it just flatlined. So mm -hmm. my impressions based upon the traffic on Sifted has been that a lot of people were excited for it and then got it and didn't like it that much. So, or they liked it just enough to finish it and don't care about playing anymore. That would be me. <laughs> I liked playing through it and I enjoyed it. I have no interest in going back and playing the DLC. Yeah, um, I did not. I did not actually finish it and uh, eventually just uninstalled it because the updates were gigantic. They are. It's another game that's creeping up like 150, 200 mm -hmm. gigs, and it's going to keep getting bigger because there's another big expansion coming here very soon. Uh, Sony Borderlands 3. Next up, Devil May Cry 5. We can't show you guys that because we'll get a copyright strike from freaking Crapcom. Uh, so we can't show it to you. Uh, but Devil May Cry Special Edition, at least this game hasn't been out for that long. Although I think it's been out longer than Borderlands, if I remember correctly. Maybe about the same. Yeah, I, don't remember. I guess they're roughly the same. Um, but that's a game that sold, I think it sold like 5 million roughly. Uh, so there's a lot of people who maybe haven't played it, haven't bought it, and maybe th they'll reconsider, particularly with a game like this where frame rates and stuff like that do matter a lot because the combat is so fast and uh, you have to be so good with your fingers. Um, so maybe I could see some value in that. They're also adding a couple extra things um, for this as well, but nothing that's like gigantic. Uh, and then next is Dirt 5, which has turned into like the poster child for Generation 9. Why is it? that Codemasters has been given the green light to just publish as much PS5 and Xbox Series X footage as it wants. <laughs> like, I feel I like... I mean, racing games seem to be kind of a preferred way to show off new hardware. To some I degree. guess. Uh, it doesn't look that good is the no, other problem. It's not, like, you don't look at it and you're like, oh, wow, I got to get a new system for that. No. And it literally, like, it was the first... I think they accidentally published a trailer before they were supposed to that had Xbox Series X footage in it. We curated it as soon as it went up. And then, like, 10 minutes later, I got, like, a DM on the site, and they're like, hey, this is a broken link. I went and looked back. They had yanked it. Mm. So, so... Because that was, like... I was the first or one of the first, like, actual footage of something actually running on the hardware, as I remember. Yeah. Well, it, was, it, it literally was up for, like, two hours, and it was gone. Um, and so, like, maybe as a make good, they're just like, well, we made you take that down, so we're just going to let you keep putting stuff up. I don't mm. know. I don't think it was smart to let Dirt 5 be the game that most people are looking at for gameplay footage. Uh, it's trying to figure out like what the capabilities are of this console. But for whatever reason, I mean, why aren't we getting trailers, tons of trailers for like Valhalla PS5, Watch Dogs Legion PS, where is that stuff? Like, why are we getting it from Code Matt? I don't know what's going on. But anyway, again, one of the, one of the big 10. Mm. Uh, next, Gears Tactics, which I loved. I played it on PC already. Still haven't finished it. I'm on the end boss and probably never will beat the end boss. Um, but I've already played through it. I'm good. I loved it. I really liked it. I think you're going to like it if you haven't played it yet. And it, to be fair, it has not released for Xbox at all yet. So this is kind of one game that you're getting at least like a console exclusive on. And it is good. Mm. And it does look good too. Um, I don't know how good it's going to look in 4K, but it looked damn good at 1080p. So... I don't know if that's really going to move the needle for most people, but maybe. Uh, next, Grounded. That's Obsidian's right. backyard Honey, I Shrunk the Kids game that we've talked about. Is that about. going to like 1.0 or is that happening? Yeah, I, it, it didn't say. I mean, it's just, it's playable on Xbox Series X. Of course it is. Everything is. Yeah. But they have to like market this stuff because Ooh, they don't have frame launch. rate. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that footage. Yeah, I mean, they don't. They don't have anything else. They got to talk about no. this stuff. That's just the way it is. Um, next up, a game that has stunned with its next gen footage, NBA 2K21. Uh, that will be available day and date with Xbox mm -hmm. Series X. And I will say this even if you don't care about basketball, if you want something that you can plunk into your Xbox, to impress your friends, your family, your wife, who, your parent. That's who, the game. The people who can't come over and see anything because we're still in the pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, some people maybe still live with... Yeah, you know, you know, yeah people that live with other people. I, yeah. recognize, I know that. And you, maybe you're getting grief. They're like, you're crazy for spending $600 on a console and you're trying to prove them wrong. This is the game to get to do it. Yeah. Um, that is a vast upgrade over the Gen 8 version of the game. It is like night and day. So that, to me, is one of the stronger releases uh, for Series X at launch. Even if you don't like basketball, it's a great technical showcase, Marvel. Uh, next up, 
observer system redux. And I know you guys are like, what, what, why is he talking about observer? Because this is literally the top 10, like most important game for Series X at launch. I'm not exaggerating. You can go look through the list if you want and try to find a game more important than this one. <laughs> I'm not mm. kidding. Um, I was very prudent with this stuff. I tried to give stuff the benefit of the doubt and Observer System Redux is one of the 10 most important games at launch of Series X. Um, I played this game, I remember, on our Patreon drive stream for a couple hours and people had like never heard of it and they're like, what is this? It's like awesome. It is a, it's from Bloober Team. If you're not familiar with that studio, they are known for making dark, gritty, smart games. And this game falls into all of those categories. It's a cyberpunk influence, first person horror adventure ish. I don't even know how to describe it. There's not a lot of action mm -hmm. in the game. It's mostly puzzle solving or figuring things out, but the, the tone and the mood in this game really, really strong. Like you play it and you feel different um, yeah. after you're done playing it. And one of Rutger Hauer's last roles. Yeah, absolutely. Before he passed away. Um, I really liked it. People who watched it on the stream for our Patreon drive really liked it and were like, oh, I didn't know this existed. I'm going to check it out. Still, it is an indie game that has been out for like two or three years at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is getting remastered and redone. And they're adding a bunch of stuff to it as well. They're adding like a new scenario and yeah, some other stuff. They've, they've tweaked the gameplay. They've tweaked a yeah. lot of the, how everything works. I mean, it, it is a almost, it almost, almost is a remake. It is. Um, which but, come, to justify why you don't just get the upgrade for free, I guess. Right, exactly. I mean, that's looking, what it really comes Looking out. at you, Control. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's turned in. You know that that doesn't fit on a disc now as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you saw that. You see the thing where like the, the whole thing was like, well, we can't. There is no. We can't actually do the upgrade to for people who have like the the, the full edition of the season pass. Like, there's yeah. actually no way to just upgrade you to the to the next gen version. So that's why we have to sell the separate thing. And then when it went live, they accidentally upgraded everyone on PS PlayStation <laughs> who had it up to the next gen. Uh, like they actually accidentally did what they said they couldn't do. And then they undid it. And it's just like, bro, like, yeah. and I, I don't blame the developers for that. That's a 505 games decision, but yeah. like, Gross. <laughs> not a good one. <laughs> not a good, not a great look. <laughs> uh, Jay Reed Vic says Codemasters games don't show well in trailers. He's right. Um, he mentioned that Dirt Rally 2.0 is stunning. And I'll be honest with you, most Dirt games, if you play them on a PC, are mind-blowing. Uh, yeah. They look really good. Um, I don't know why that's not coming through in the footage. I mean, maybe this game just doesn't look as good as their other work. I don't know. But you're right, Jay Reed Vic. Typically, their games are stunners. So I'm as shocked by this as you are um so anyway that's the observer again in the top 10 at least in my opinion next up watchdogs legion we just talked about that um it does have smart delivery meaning if you buy it for xbox one mm. um you get the free upgrade on your series x uh so we're not going to talk about watchdogs a whole lot more um next up is and last of the 10 is yakuza like a dragon um, now, that is one game that is a new game. It's been out in Japan for a while, but it's new to the U.S. So that's probably another one I would kind of pop up near the top of the list. If you're trying to figure out what games you want to buy for launch, I would put that up there, too. Mm -hmm. But, Matt, we're at the end of the list here. I mean, Yakuza has also got the whole issue of like the, you know, the next gen version isn't coming to PS5 until next year. Yep. And it's like the a saves are compatible and like, yeah. you know, the save, save compatibility is one of the things really, I think, driving me to lean Xbox on multi-platform style. At least certainly with Watch Dogs Legion, because like I want to play that on October 29th, not yeah. just because we want to talk about it on the show, but because I'm I excited about it. Watch Dogs Legion. Yeah, I want to play it. I want to play it. Um, yeah. and, uh, but again, it's a giant Ubisoft open world game that I'm going to do a whole bunch of, let's be honest, tedious bullshit in it. And like, I'm also going to build my team and have unique probably characters I might not be able to find again if I played it again. And I want to start over. Yeah. You know, and PlayStation isn't compatible with saves or, or we're not guaranteed to be compatible with saves. Or it's a case-by-case case basis. Case so you're by right. And they haven't said anything about this. So I I'm take the risk. Yeah. Take, so I'm going to say Xbox because Xbox is fully compatible. So and I really feel like the the performance differential on this is going to be neg negligible. I agree. Um, I'm going to so. play Legion on Xbox. I'm probably going to play Valhalla on PS5. I'm probably going to stick to Assassin's Creed on Xbox because I have all the Assassin's Creeds on Xbox. Uh, and I, I have most I, of them on there. I like having them all lined up on the you know <laughs> thing. OCD. You know? <laughs> Although. Like I will say this, and I wonder if there will be some kind of a, um, a, a fix for this. 
one th and yes, yeah, so well maybe a little a little OCD. But one of the things I hate is when games spell or you know stylize their titles in the in the in the listings on on the system differently from sequel to sequel uh -huh. so that like the sequels end up being before the first <laughs> game in the assassin's creed has I that all over the place and the other one that does that is dark siders because dark siders um it goes dark siders 2 what is it? i think it's dark siders 2 dark siders 3 and then dark siders De death in dark siders death war, in Mas edition. war mastered edition <laughs> because they put different like trademark symbols after uh -huh. the dark siders word that moves it alphabetically to after the sequels and i'm like guys <laughs> can we just you're, standardize this <laughs> you're killing me smalls like you got like you, you <laughs> gotta get your shit together on that like just yeah all roman numerals are all arabic numerals that's the other like, thing that throws something. stuff off sometimes yeah. they use roman numerals sometimes they don't yeah like, that, that's, assassin's creed, that's assassin's creed's problem is that they use yeah. arabic numerals for some and like assassin's creed 3 is assassin's creed creed i i i and it's just like dude and no. they'll change it so for instance when ubisoft does this all the time by the way so they announce watchdogs legion um, in one trailer, it had a colon. In another mm. trailer, it didn't have a colon. And Ubisoft is so bad about this, I email their PR to ask them about it every yeah. time. I was like, I, okay. I happen, I happen to know that Ubisoft has pretty much dis Ubisoft marketing has pretty much now decided that colons were were colons are last decade. Well, so here's the thing. No one uses so colons anymore. I thought I, so, okay. So I email them. I'm like, does it have a colon or no colon? They say no colon. That's the way it's styled. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is in our press release. Okay. So we create the game on Sifted. And by now we've literally tagged like probably a hundred pieces of content or more to that page. But now if you look at all Ubisoft's official stuff, it's Watchdogs colon Legion. And we've already <laughs> named like, and it's important for SEO and all this other stuff. It matters. Um, I mean, you see a lot of websites that just refuse to use the Roman numerals because they know that most people, when they search, they don't use the Roman numerals. Mm -hmm. So even if the game will stylize it with like two eyes, they'll just use the number two in their articles and on their game page. I get that as for SEO. I prefer to be correct. Um, and so we've got burned by Ubisoft a couple times in that case. So anyway, that's the, the cream of the crop for the Xbox Series X launch lineup. And there isn't a whole lot of cream there, Matt. I mean, no. I'm really wondering, like somebody who comes to me and someone's gonna, it's gonna happen here in the next few weeks and probably several times over, someone's gonna ask me, what do I buy with my Xbox Series X? And there's no easy answer. Like it, mm -hmm. it turns into a conversation at that point. It's which games do you own already? Really is what it turns into. Do you own all these games already? If not, let me try to find one that you do not own already. I mean, that's where we're at. So there's very little incentive to buy this for to play something on day one. It's all about like, I have all these old games and I want to see how much prettier they look today because there's really no relief in the immediate future either. Um, other than I'm going to play third party games and they're going to look damn good. But I just, I struggle I mean, a lot of people are doing the false equivalency thing. That seems to be a thing over the last four years, the false equivalency, where they, they're like, I don't like this thing, so this other thing that I do like, I'm going to make sure that I say this thing is just as bad so it doesn't look as bad. That's been happening with PS5 and Xbox Series X in this way. Um, they're trying to say they're both kind of, they both suck at launch. They both, have, no, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> You're playing Miles Morales in a Demon Souls remake on PlayStation 5 on day one. What are you playing on your Xbox Series X that you can't play somewhere else? There's nothing. So launch lineups, no comparison. PlayStation 5 all the way. Hardware, obviously, that's something that's still yet to be determined. Um, and I'm sure Digital Foundry will figure that one out pretty quick, too. So um, I'm really disappointed in the launch lineup of Xbox Series X. At the same time, I feel like a lot of people over the last week have been getting educated on console launch lineups. So I think it was GameSpot that just went and did like every launch lineup for every PlayStation console ever to show people, hey, you're slagging this launch line. It's actually probably the best launch lineup yeah. for a PlayStation console ever. It's Demon not even Souls, close. Demon Souls and Miles Morales alone beats all the other PlayStation launch lineups combined. Easily. It's not even close. No. Like, it's not the same. Like people say, you guys sit here and tell me that like Summoner and and like those other like weird like those weird like 
preliminary JRPGs it's that the I can't even remember. in the chat now. The only 100% next-gen exclusive are Destruction All-Stars and Enlisted. No, no, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm seeing the same crap I've been seeing on the internet for the last month. It's bullshit. Just look also, at like, the lineups. Which Demon one would you Souls, rather have? Demon Souls is an exclusive, people. Like, it doesn't matter there's a PS3 version of it. That's not, that doesn't work. Also, by the way, go play that PS3 version and tell me yeah. it's the same freaking game. It's Anyone not. who it's says that has remake. never played Demon Souls on and PS3. And if you're not excited about Demon Souls, I get it, but it's I am because I like those games. It's a trash argument. The PlayStation 5 launch lineup destroys the Xbox Series X launch lineup. Who knows two years from now what's going to be better, but that's just the facts right now. Yeah. That's and then like uh, compare like some like what was the I I'm thinking about some terrible like CG JRPG thing with green and a guy like looking at a glowing green light on that PS2 launch. I think it's it was like there was something ring. There was a Ooh, something in that you, you know it's just what you know. No one it's right there that. on the edge. I, I can just yeah, you know what I'm talking it. about. You can see you can see the cover right. <laughs> yes, like, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yep. Um. I mean, it's going to be hard to beat like the Dreamcast U U.S. launch lineup like that because they had a year in Japan to make shit. Like, I actually just watched ready. a feature on YouTube about the Dreamcast launch mm -hmm. uh, because I was talking about on Ask Chain Any with anything. People asked me uh, what were my favorite launch lineups, and I was trying to find footage of all these old console launches, and so I came across this feature about the Dreamcast launch. Right. And yeah, like <laughs> there's a lot of games available. Oh yeah, it was amazing. All of them were like exclusive. Yeah, like it's, but, a lot of them sucked. But but the real Dreamcast launch for those of us who got in on the Japanese ground floor a year earlier was a Mahjong game in Godzilla, Godzilla. Generations. Yeah. So no. Yeah. Like, and, <laughs> like anyway, what I'm getting at is even if the PS5 Xbox was coming out in America next November, the launch lineup would be pretty fucking great too. It like would. It, it's, yeah. that's a that's a apples and oranges situation. What I'm getting at though is that not even the Xbox. Series X launch lineup isn't terrible either when you compare it no. to prior consoles. Like, it's just not. It's, like, But it's just like the thing about, like, forgotten. you already have a console that can play that. Yeah, yeah. You know? But it's still, people have forgotten what prior console launches were like. Like, if you, there was... Like Nintendo is really the only one of the three mm. that generally releases a console with a big AAA game. Everyone else yeah. is just like, whatever we got, let's just get it out there. So yeah. even so, I mean, like, Sony kind of tried with Killzone for the PS4, but I don't think anybody. I mean, you can describe that as AAA in terms of budget, but I don't think anyone would describe it as AAA in terms. Of Xbox fans working overtime it. in the chat right now, Kyle. So. <laughs> it's just Demon Souls, and that's a remake. <laughs> yeah, it's a remake of a great game. Like, what else? Uh, keep trying, folks. Keep trying. You're not going to change the narrative because just be, it's the just truth. Just be glad if you're an Xbox fan. Uh, yeah, just, just be, be happy. Who just cares? be also just be glad that Halo got delayed because otherwise that thing be coming out and getting roasted. Exactly. They made like, the right decision there. Who cares? Yeah. It doesn't matter, guys. If you're an Xbox fan, that's fine. It's okay to admit that the launch lineup isn't as good as PS5. It's not a big deal. Yeah. No, it's one still care. a step up. You're no still going to be playing in three months. You're like, still going to be playing stuff that looks way better than it would on the on the Xbox One X and all. I mean, it's still an upgrade. It still yeah. matters. And Cinetyke says if nothing interests you at launch, why not wait and buy the console later? Absolutely! Yeah. There's sure. no reason to buy these if there's not a game to play. Who wants to fiddle around with the UI for $500? Mm -hmm. Nobody. If I wasn't, if I wasn't, you know, getting stuff to talk about on the show and just sort of like to be a giant, you know, nerd about it essentially because I had wanting to have the new thing, um, like a responsible consumer me would probably be waiting until Fable came out. I wouldn't. I'll thing. say this. If I didn't have this job, I would not buy an Xbox Series X at launch. Definitely not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No. I, I fear that it, once it's starting to lose, that we could get a price drop pretty quickly, like a year's time from now. Um, I would be, I'd I just be a little surprised by that, but I bet you would get better bundles. Yeah, and I know? definitely wouldn't go through the hassle of trying to get one at launch, more importantly. Like maybe it would be a case where... I would get the Series X when Halo Infinite comes out, like six months later. And mm -hmm. then it's not a mad rush to try to get a console. You can pick up the console the week before Halo comes out. Yeah. That's well, maybe. Would. Like, I think if I was waiting for Halo, I think I would wait for an actual release date for Halo, <laughs> like a concrete <laughs> yeah. Halo, Halo release date. It's not looking and good. Then, well, no, but that's, that's not my point. Like, like, I would wait for what I felt was a concrete release date for Halo to be announced, and then I would buy the system. Because I think, even, even though, like, sure, this is not going to be the hottest hot item like PS5 is going to be maybe but like I feel like you're going to have trouble getting hold of one the week before Halo comes out because I think a lot of other people are going to have that same idea or there could just be piles and piles of them sitting at Best Buy at yeah. that point
because but I, I would not I would not wait till the last minute if, if Halo is your 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 moment. Well, think about this, Matt. After launch, you're paying the is, same. What is going to happen to convince someone to go buy one? Word of mouth when people get them, and mm. you go to a friend's house and you see it. Wow, that looks amazing. I've never seen watchdogs look that good. That sure. After that's gone, what? Well, I mean, it, it could be very useful as a space heater. Um, <laughs> The, all jokes aside, like I'm just really I'm struggling to find out where that next other than Halo, when that next point is going to be where people are going to feel compelled. I don't know. Like the only thing I could think of is if like the user experience is just way smoother than the PS5 yeah. somehow, and like people are just like, if you want to do this or this multimedia stuff or old games or multi-platform stuff, like it's just a smoother, easier experience, and it's easier to expand the the stuff, and it can get like a you know it, it's. You know, it has more hard drive space uh, available. Like it, you know, could, you know, the SSD. You know, get an, again, actually, like two hundred gigs or so compared to the PS Five, um, just out of the box. Uh, that's the only thing I can really think of. Like Microsoft doesn't live or die by exclusives these days, but a lot of stuff does live or die by exclusives, and so you might end up. Just well, sales generally do live in, especially yeah, you, if you're looking. You at just bucks. might be sitting around waiting for like you know their new newly purchased game studios to sort of start coughing up the goods. Yep. Not saying this like that Bethesda, could be but ways away. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, Hellblade Two, which is supposed to be, I guess, early next year or something. Like, that's what you're going to see some stuff early next year that's going to be something you want to play. But again, yeah. if you have a if you have a decent gaming PC, that might be redundant to you. That's like that's true. the thing about the Xbox is like it's hard to sort of really stand there and plant your flag on the Xbox hill because Microsoft no isn't even doing that. <laughs> Microsoft is just sort yes. of like, hey, we just want you to use our Xbox accoutrement kind of thing. Like, yeah. like, use the Xbox app on Windows. Use use the use xCloud on hey, your phone. Like, on your iPhone, yeah. Yeah, like they, they don't care really. If you, I mean, they care, but they don't really, they're not like, hey, well, buy give it our hardware, damn month. it. Yeah, yeah, they want you to subscribe to Game Pass more than they want you to buy an Xbox Series X. Yep. All right, let's get start getting through some other stuff because there's a bunch still and we're not doing so well with time. Uh, next, uh, Phil Spencer did a big interview with Kotaku this week. Um, and he's been doing interviews, like it seems like one a day for weeks. But for whatever reason, a lot of the questions other people were asking him that he wouldn't answer, he answered all of them from mm -hmm. Kotaku. Uh, yeah, I was a little shocked at how candid I mean, he really was. opened up for that interview after yeah. being very guarded in all the others. Um, and they didn't pull any punches with the questions. I, it was a great interview. And I wish I saw more interviews like that in the industry today. Uh, that is one thing that I do feel like has a hole has been left without game trailers is our mm -hmm. interviews. Mm -hmm. We used to do real interviews with everybody we interviewed. We never just sat there and just spit out the PR lines. And our interviews were good, great. We got exclusive stuff out of them because we were brave enough to not just acquiesce to the developer and ask the tough questions. There's none of that anymore. It has completely disappeared since GT went away. Anyway, mm -hmm. Kotaku delivered on this one though. It did exactly what we used to do on GT. You set them up with the platitudes, you let them talk about whatever it is that they want to talk about to make their product look good. And then you ask them the real questions. And that's what they did. And they got everything out of Phil, basically, that was left. Um, and the biggest one that everybody was wondering about is what's going to happen with Bethesda's games on other platforms. They asked him specifically, would it be smarter financially to allow the Elder Scrolls 6 and Starfield games like that to be released on PlayStation 5? And he just blatantly said no. He said, we don't need PlayStation 5 to make this deal work for us. Um, he did not commit to, they're not coming to PlayStation mm -hmm. 5, but he said, we don't need it. Um, we yeah. will and get he said something. Back. He said something like, yeah, I mean, maybe. Like, like well, he, he said like, no, case, he, he said the same thing, case, case by, by case, case basis. Yeah. That's what he's been saying all along, which leads me to believe that Starfield and Elder Scrolls are going to be a case of no way. Probably <laughs> so, not. And that's kind, of what we, that's kind of what we said before. Yeah, I mean, it was a pipe dream as a PlayStation owner to hope you're still going to get those games. You're just kind of holding on by your fingernails, but I think yeah. you just finally slipped off. And So there's your there's your Xbox must-buy situation about three, four years down the line. Yeah, depending. I mean, I think Starfield maybe a couple years away, something like that. Like, I'll, I'll be thrilled if we're playing Starfield in 2022. I think best-case scenario, Q4 2021. We'll see. Um, honestly, one of my contacts at Bethesda is no longer there, which sucks. <laughs> it was a good contact, but they moved on to a new job. Uh, so I lost that. But anyway, I still know what's going on there. Uh, next, 
a big deal was announced. So we all know GameStop is just struggling. It's still, even in the pandemic and people are in game sales have like skyrocketed. They still, their last financial report, they lost mm -hmm. like $200 million or something in one quarter. So they're doing terrible. And well, especially must suck because of, uh, you remember before the pandemic, like their big move was to pivot into like being like esports arenas. Yeah, which is that obviously lasted literally like a week. Yeah. Like they set up one, people made fun of it, and it never happened again. It doesn't yeah. and help. And even if they hadn't, like you can't do that now. So yeah. it doesn't help when the esports athletes are making fun of it right. while they're doing it. And that's what happened. They're like, why are we here? Like we're just standing in a GameStop for some reason. Like anyway. So, yeah, that didn't work. GameStop is on the ropes. And Xbox basically threw it a lifeline this week. And I, Matt and I are going to try to figure out why. Um, and basically what, what's happening is any Xbox Series X or Series S that is sold at GameStop, whenever the owner of those consoles buys anything, GameStop gets a cut. So... The story on Sifted, uh, someone was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Like, how can you do this? And I just wrote, yeah, this is a huge conflict of interest, and we'll talk about it on Game Face. And then someone replied to me, how is it a conflict of interest? <laughs> Matt, would you like to share why it's a conflict of interest? Or do you want me to explain it? Um, or do you not think it is? I, I don't think you should explain that because I'm not really... Maybe okay. that's not how I term that. Like, okay. I, I, so it seems like it seems like a weird situation in the well, sense. Well, I guess that, the thing is, is what is the interest is the problem. So, I'll well, I don't know what Microsoft's interest is here. That's that's my question. I'll like, explain what, it to you right why do now. They, why do they want to just hand money to this failing business and maybe piss off their other retail partners? Well, it's because yeah. of the conflict of interest. Because you're incentivizing GameStop to sell more Xboxes instead of PlayStation mm -hmm. 5s. If they make money off of everything you buy on that Xbox, why would they ever want to sell you a PlayStation 5? Like, ever! Mm -hmm. Also, PlayStation 5 has, like, the digital version. It doesn't have a disk right. drive. So, but wait, so what's the conflict of interest? The conflict of interest is the retailer now is suddenly incentivized to push one product over another. So all the sales associates in GameStop are going to be like, they're never going to push PS5, or they're not going to be told to push PS5. They right, may I'm just, I don't see that. I'm not seeing what's which interest is being conflicted. That there? was what I was getting at. What is the interest? Because... It's just, is it unethical? Is it a conflict of interest? I don't even know how, how you label it because you're allowing- I don't, think, I don't think conflict of interest is the right term. Was well, a conflict it, of Sony's interest, I guess. Well, yeah, but Sony doesn't have any rights to any kind of stake in GameStop unless they also have a similar deal and they're being edged out by the other deal that was just made. The Like a, a store can push whatever they want to push. Like as you know, yeah. financial incentive or no financial incentive, like Sony's Sony's play on this would be either to ignore it, which I think is probably safe to do. Like I don't think GameStop is really your lifeline if you're Sony selling PlayStation 5s. I feel like your major retail chains are taking care of that more in the Amazon, Walmart, Target department. Um, it's, oh, the guy I, I, it, it just feels, like, it just feels like a money loser for Microsoft for what game? Like, I mean, I guess they're game. They're pushing their console in their stores all day. Sure, every day but like over the PlayStation who's, 5. But who's going to boom. stores? Like who's going to GameStops and window shopping for like it's life's like, not going to be like this forever, man. That forever, deal but is like, for a sign for like the next seven years. Right. But like I don't I if GameStop's even around that long, like it's <laughs> that's, just that's actually a good question. It just seems like if you're going to do that with any retail partner. Why them, other than the fact that they could Because be they're lost. probably the only one that would do it, Matt, because right. they don't want to like, piss, most retailers don't want to piss off Sony. It's just such a weird thing where like you're willing to give away a cut of digital sales to them forever for that Xbox just because they sold it to to somebody. Well, because you're you're planting the seed of a money tree. So you right. sell that console to a kid, that kid's gonna spend tons of money on that. They bought it from you. You planted the seed, the kid takes it home and the money tree grows for Microsoft. That's why. Yeah, but um, you're still losing a chunk to them. I mean, it almost feels like a like a hedge bet that like we can we can like have these guys push this system in the in the launch window, and then they'll probably be out of business by this time next year. So we <laughs> won't have to actually pay them anything. I mean, in the let's end. be honest. Microsoft's really smart, so yeah. it, it, you very well could be. They. Can I mean, that is a level of ruthless that Microsoft will pull. It is known can. for. Yeah, I mean, you could be right. Um, but the bottom line is, is treating of the two companies is going to give preferential treatment to the other. So maybe conflict of 
no conflict of interest is right because it does have an interest in providing a retail outlet for PlayStation as well. So that's not what conflict of interest means. Legally, I get though. it. I'm trying to figure out what this is. I don't it's know. Wrong. It's, it's wrong. A, I think it's I don't a, know it, how it's wrong. It's a, it's a shady promotional deal, I guess is the yeah. best way I could put it. Like, like it's, I mean, I, it's, it's, shady it's, is it's, the best shady is the right i think shady i mean obviously shady is not a legal term either but like um it's sort of like i guess it's kind of anti-consumer yes in the sense that like it's yeah, you're gonna just, mislead people in your stores to make money i mean yeah i mean or it's, maybe you are telling the truth maybe I mean, you probably are telling the truth but it's like you're not if you're not aware going into that store that they have a xbox and you probably will be because i bet there'll be signage fucking everywhere and there'll be like one little kiosk of playstation 5 over in a corner <laughs> like one sad little blue light i mean that's the other part thing. of it matt right like i don't know if this is a fact but it may be written in that contract that the shelf space that xbox gets the floor space that they get i'm sure they will get you like, know they will get you know place of honor up front when you first walk yeah, in playstation stuff it will matters. Be in the back. Like you don't make that deal without like doing. You're, you're gonna you're gonna definitely do a reset <laughs> of of where you place things. Yeah. You have to walk all the way back to see the PlayStation stuff. The Xbox stuff will be out behind the counter. Like when you used to go to um, the uh, video store and the porn section was all the way in the back. Right. Yeah. You got you got to go in the the the, the porn station the five section. You got to move the curtain over. It's gonna smell real weird. Like it's just. <laughs> oh my man. God! People just come back and sweating in the PlayStation Five section. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> well, all I know is I don't like it. I think it's anti-consumer. I think I think it's ultimately going to lead to them misleading consumers in a lot of cases, trying to convince people to buy an Xbox instead of a PlayStation. I just think it's bad. I don't know what the right term is to use. Shady definitely works. Uh, underhanded maybe works. I mean, I, I'd, totally I'd say agree. gross. Is, gross. Is that's accurate. Word. <laughs> I've been using that word a lot lately after not using it since the yeah. 80s. I used it in the 80s, but so much gross stuff has happened over the last few years that somehow I became a part of my vernacular again. Um, it's yeah. just app. It's just appropriate. I think my my it. instinctual response to that deal is just ick. Yeah, <laughs> like it's just mm. from both sides. I mean, I get why Microsoft did it. It's smart, but also they did it. Yeah. <laughs> like they had to know that it was shady and slimy. And all also those makes me glad packages. that like my my stupid backup bundle I had to get is a PS5 and not the Xbox oh. because. Uh, I would definitely not want an Xbox from them to continue giving them money every time right. I bought a game. <laughs> like I, that's, a, I, that's actually, I mean, for conscientious people, that's something to consider. Yeah, like I don't, I mean, I don't want the GameStop. people, yeah. I don't want the people that work at GameStop to lose their jobs. Like that's a no, lot of no, people no, out of not. work. Yeah. But like, I also don't feel any compulsion to support that company. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, hopefully they can find a job working in games at Best Buy or wherever. You know, there's other places where they can put their yeah, expertise. I mean, that stuff, to, that's uh, tight, though, right now. It's, you know, it I, I would not want to have to be looking for a job, especially nope. in the retail sector right now. It's it's a And that's even leaving aside the fact that, at least in America, um, work in retail is taking your life in your hands right now. Yeah. Like, you're exposed yeah. to God knows what. And you got to deal with crazy people who won't wear masks and screaming about rights and freedoms. And you're just like, I just, I just want to sell... I just want to say a cell phone like for 11 to 25 an hour. Like I'm not here to like argue the constitution with you, Karen. Like it's just, yeah, look, it's I, see, the, I see people arguing in chat that this happens at all retail. This does not happen with retail. I saw someone use like an example of, cereal. I mean, there's, there's the like cereal companies pay to get their cereal in front. That's not all this is. Like, I mean, they do that, but also like, you're not taking the cereal home and then and, Ralph's and then, or Kroger <laughs> is making money as you eat. And the then cereal. every time you buy milk for the rest of your life, it's like they eat, like they, the Kellogg's get to cut of the milk. to make up excuses. They're uh, just consoles. Oh my gosh. They're it's electronics. Not the, it's not the I'll whole. I'll never pay, understand a fanboy. It's I not never the, will. It's not that we paid for oh. promotion in the store. It's that <laughs> that sale then benefits the store forever. Forever. Through Forever. sales that through sales that the store has nothing to do with making, like Ugh. that's bizarre. That is a very weird setup. I don't. Oh, now I I'm the king of impotent outrage because I'm I'm upset about this. Why do you guys watch the show? I can't think, <laughs> think of I'm such a, an idiot. I can't think of another example of something comparable to this. Like there's nothing comparable. Nothing. Like, you'd have to go into some weird used car. Why things. hasn't this happened before? If it's so common, why didn't Nintendo do it with the N64 and the GameCube? Because maybe, it doesn't maybe, happen. Well, maybe because this functionality was Ugh. wasn't built into really any of the previous. Let's move on. Maybe, maybe this functionality off. wasn't built into any of the previous <laughs> OSs. I'm starting like, to get like sweat Play, on the brow. PlayStation, Andrew. PlayStation Five got game hints, and Xbox got GameStop <laughs> ATM like wiring features. That, that, those are the those are the new Ugh. innovations.
Oh, geez. Anyway, let's move on because I'm about to blow my lid on the chat. Um, next up, overheating. Something that we've talked about a couple weeks here on Game Face. Uh, we kind of mentioned last week that it looked like it wasn't a thing. And now this week it has been 1 million percent confirmed. Overheating is not an issue. It is fine. It gets warm out of the top like every other piece of electronics that has a yeah. fan in it. I mean, as soon as you see that vent on the top, you're like, okay, that's where the heat's coming out. Yeah. Heat rises. That's yes. where it's going to go. Yes, like, it's fine. There's no overheating issues with Xbox Series X. It's good. I'm sure if you're in a tiny room in an apartment, it's going to get hot if you don't have ventilation. Like, it's going to warm the room up just like a plasma yeah. TV would. Yeah, my TV know? warms up the room. It's yeah. just the way it is. Um, and then next, Master Chief Collection. This was a pleasant surprise. Coming to Xbox Series X on November 17th. Um, and I did not include that in the launch lineup because it isn't making launch, but maybe I should have because it is so close. That might be the game that most people play in yeah, the launch. I, mean, I still have it. I just I just yeah. had to reinstall it for some reason. Like there was an update. It made me re-download like 170 gigs on my mm -hmm. on my Xbox One X. But like, yeah, that's good that they've got that out there there, and I'm yeah. sure it'll look better. And basically, probably the PC version. Like yeah, running which on looks the great. Series X. Yeah. yeah, that might be one of the like most played games. Yeah, I mean that is a fucking games. bundle right now that yeah. works properly. Yeah. That is a hell of a piece look, of they did stuff for really you for like thirty nine ninety nine. Like that's yeah. real good. They did a really good job on it too. Um, yeah, once once Bungie took over or three four three took over and like really whipped that thing into shape over the course of four years. Well, they've been taking uh, their it, time, but that's why. I mean, because they, yeah, they got, to, got to work. And they had to, to fix a bunch of stuff. They had to wait for the Xbox One OS to literally be updated. Like, yeah. it was a whole thing. And look, they, you know, they maybe it shouldn't have been like that in the first place when it came out. It shouldn't have been outsourced the way it was or whatever. But a lot of a lot of companies wouldn't have stuck with that as long as, that, as these guys did to make sure that that worked and was a worthy sort of archive of this important series that you can now carry forward to all the Xboxes going forward. I mean, that's the good news. It's preserved. Yeah. Good. Yep. Going forward. <clears throat> and then the final Xbox news from this week um, was watching gameplay footage of Xbox Series X games, including Dirt 5. There's a lot of screen tearing in the gameplay mm. footage. Be safe. Oh, and as Vincent points out, the Master Chief Collection is 120 frames a second. Oh yeah, so, that that is it. Look, if they could, you want to buy a new one. TV for that? There you go. <laughs> there you go. You're probably not worth it, but there you go. at least you have something to play <laughs> at 120. Um, even though the characters are made out of like 100 polygons, but and it should run at 120. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, there's been lots of screen tearing and V-Sync. If you've watched some of the more technical YouTubers kind of dive into the footage, it's been a big concern of theirs. Um, and it, there doesn't seem to be a lot of rhyme or reason to it. Like pretty mm. much the only game that journalists have right now is Dirt 5. I think they have like one other one maybe. So they're all digging into Dirt 5 and they've been trying and you do have different graphic settings in that game and they've been fiddling with them and they cannot get the tearing to go away. Um, now, obviously mm. in PC gaming, you have V-Sync and you can just yeah. toggle it on or off. There's a lot of features. Or you can, you can force it through the graphics card yep. options. Even if, if it's not working yep. in the game, you can, there's a way to make it work. But the closed system will, of a console, right. not so much. I mean, I will say that I think, um, and I've heard from some of my d developer friends, uh, that day one patches are going to be very important on these new systems. Like there's a lot of stuff coming in hot on these things. So it wouldn't surprise me if part of this is because that's an issue that might be fixed, you know, at closer to launch day for the for the consoles. Um, so that's kind of the price of of you know journalist early access in a way. Um, but it does kind of you know make my eyebrows raise a little bit because I'm not a big stickler for like you know glitches or da -da. V, like screen tearing drives me up the fucking wall. Like I, V Sync is one of my favorite things in the history of video games because I yeah. can't stand I think a lot of people agree that. with you that. A screen tearing is, is that it's is one of those awful. things that everybody can notice. Like, yeah. like I would play N64 games back in the day and people would come over. I'd be like, oh man, it's frame rate. Blah, blah. They're like, what are you talking about? Like they yeah. can't even see it. Screen yeah, like this tearing. is not frame pacing. This no. is like, I, I, the, the world is splitting in half and it's yes, ruining Literally, things. the top yeah. part of the screen is tearing away from the yeah. bottom half of the screen. That's exactly what it is. And, I mean, I'm look, I think they'll get it under control. Yeah. I just think at launch, you may see some anomalies like this, and you may see them on PS5 as well. Um, yeah, we I just think, I think it's going to be very important. PS5 friend. gameplay footage, honestly. I think it's going to be very important to, to judge things by day one patches, because um, yeah, I think a lot of the stuff is coming down to the wire. Yep. So, That's the way launches yeah, are. You know, it's definitely be informed by thinking, you know, like information like this, but like 
check back on launch day and see if they've because vsync is not a huge implementation like you can you it's can not do that resource heavy either no it's not going to like tank your frame rate if you turn it on um, no it's 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 it should be a pretty simple fix it just might not be in the build they have yet yeah it's, i mean also these games aren't done so yeah. stuff like that could be added later on or they could fix it before the final version comes out any of that stuff um, so there you go. That's the latest on Xbox Series X. Again, three weeks away from launch, people. Not long to go. Next, we're going to talk about Game Informer's excellent coverage of Spider-Man Miles Morales. It was the cover story on Game Informer this month, and as usual, that came along with an accoutrement of media and footage and interviews. And I mean, they really blew this game out this week, Matt. They had like three interviews with Insomniac. They had like five different gameplay clips, an exclusive trailer. I think what's happening is Game Informer is starting to transition its exclusive programs over to digital. Mm -hmm. um, who knows how long the mag's going to be around? You know, it was, they just went through a bunch of layoffs. Andy Mack just left. Um, and so I think they're they're just getting out ahead of it and being like, look, we're going to still be here if there's no magazine. So let's just start getting these plans in place to start look, pushing for more video instead yeah. of just written content. And it keeps a bunch of people employed. So it does. Yeah. Um, and they did a great job blowing out Miles Morales. Uh, the interviews with Insomniac were great. They asked all the questions that I probably would have asked if I were the one doing the interview. Um, yeah, it actually kind of felt like classic game trailers content <laughs> to some degree. Yeah, um, they just did a great job with the coverage. So kudos to Game Informer. Also, we're running their footage right now. Thank you. Uh, obviously, we put a tag in uh, thanking them for using it. Uh, there's not a lot. Like when you actually add it all up, it amounted to like four minutes of footage, but it's all really good footage. And I did not include the first boss fight in this. So I didn't want to mm -hmm. spoil that for you guys. So that's not in this B-roll. But let's start talking about some of the stuff that... Uh, that they gleaned from their time. And I'll say this, it wasn't that much. Um, a lot of times when Game Informer does these cover stories, they get like the last big like revelation about a game uh, that people didn't know uh, leading up to kind of its final quarter before it releases. Not so much in this one. Some cool stuff, but nothing like earth shattering. Um, so we already knew last week, and we talked about it last week, that Peter Parker has been replaced inside the game. There's a new character model for Peter now inside the game. What we didn't really know last week, though, was that he plays a big role in the game. He's not just like this guy that you see, and you're like, hey, there's Peter, and then you don't see him again. He's a part of the plot. He's a part of the story. You're going to interact with him a bunch, um, which is cool. Like, I liked Peter from the original oh, yeah. game. Um, I want him to be in this. I don't, is this a sequel? I guess it is. Yeah, it's a sequel. I mean, yeah. it takes, takes place after yeah. the first game. Um, so I want him to be in there. So I'm very happy about that. But the coolest thing of all, Matt, is Spider-Cat. Yeah. How that definitely... Okay, so maybe that is the one thing that they announced right before release that was like a big earth-shaking thing. There's a cat in the game. That's not a big deal. The big deal is that the cat is your friend and he's like mm. chills in your backpack. And when you fight, he fights with you. <laughs> it is flipping cool. Um, can you think of another game that had an attack cat like this? Um, I mean, not that like, like tigers. I mean, there've been things like that. Yeah, uh, like there's, mounts and stuff. There's Dexstar in uh, in Injustice Two. Atrocitus has uh, the Red Lantern has the the, the space cat that, that Monster fights. Hunter. Monster Hunter has fighting cats, yes. And that one fights, it is kind of like an AI-driven cat yeah. that like fights alongside you. It's yeah, really it's, cool. And the way that they implemented it, it's awesome. It's like literally you're in the middle of a combo and the cat busts out of the backpack and just swipes. <laughs> it's so cool. I never also like a fun little like New York thing because like yeah. the bodega cat is such yeah. a... And that's what he... And his, the suit that he has is called like the bodega, bodega cat suit or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a big cat person, so I'm 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 in favor. I don't have one anymore, yeah. but I do love cats. Um, but I it's not that I don't have a cat because I don't like them. Um, mm. I've just got used to not having one, and now I don't miss the responsibility that comes along with one. Mm. Even though with cats, it's really not much to be honest. They're very independent. Um, I also love as we're seeing in this footage. One of the things I really like in this game is they the animation on the swinging miles still isn't very good at keeping form on the yeah. low end of the swing and I he gets it together by the time he pops off the line but like he hasn't done this as much well as imagine Peter. the g's that you're yeah. pulling when you're at that bottom of that arc like yeah and what i'm wondering that web i can't even imagine and like what i'm wondering is like 
will he get better at it as the game goes on? That would like be in, cool. Like in Into the and Spider Verse, like yeah, yeah. Into the Spider Verse, they did that. They not only made him like move like better well, in the as, beginning, as, that, as he was the, terrible as the movie went on, but they actually up his frame rate. They, the frame rate of the character in the movie gets faster. So like early on, he's animated at 12 frames a second and Peter Parker, the older Peter Parker is animated to 24. So he looks smoother and more practiced. And by the end of the movie, uh, Miles has become 24 frames a second in, in Spider-Man action sequences. Yeah. So, and I know the people that work at Insomniac know that. And I know they're, oh, yeah. they, all those animation guys are crazy good at this. And that would be a totally Insomniac touch to put in that like Miles gets better as you level up or as the story progresses. And by the end, he's swinging right alongside Peter with just as much skill. That would be yep. really cool to see. Yep. I'm hoping that's in there. Agreed. Um, some other stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, they went through his abilities. Um, and at least the ones that are different from what you had with Peter Parker. And most of his abilities that set him apart from Peter Parker have to do with electricity. Mm. Um, he has what's called bioelectrokinesis, mm. which allows him to channel the electricity that's in all of us, which is actually true. Uh, we all have like electricity coursing through us. He can channel it and then use it for a variety of purposes. Um, the first one, well, actually, there, so that is tied into a brand new meter in the game as well. That's called the Venom meter. Um, and it's very much like Peter's focus meter from the last game. Uh, basically, it builds up over time as you land blows, and then eventually you can pull off special attacks. Um, his special attacks are the Venom Punch and the Venom Blast and the Venom Strike. And those are all electrically influenced attacks that in some way uses atoms to uh, inflict damage on the enemy. Um, and then he um, he also, his, his webs are also charged with electricity. So like Peter, you web somebody down, it, it just holds them down. When you do that with Miles, it holds them down. Plus it's like shocking them and kind of incapacitating them at the mm -hmm. same time, uh, which is cool. Um, and then the last feature that if this one really changes the game more than any of the electricity stuff, and that is his spider camouflage. Um, now, stealth was a part of Spider-Man. It wasn't a big part. And I did like the fact that you could kind of decide um, how you wanted to use it. Or if you didn't want to use it at all, I didn't use stealth that much at all when I played through it. But the spider camouflage in Miles Morales lets him turn invisible. And it's not... It's not like one of those typical cloak invisibility cloaks that you get in games where you activate it and then there's a timer and when it ends, it's done. You can turn this on and off at will like mid combo to disappear mid combo, reappear behind the enemy and land attacks. To me, it opens up so many possibilities for combat in this game to get creative and have fun with it. Um, in fact, you've probably seen it already. We probably ran through the B-roll uh, that we have, uh, but they show a lot of that. And not only mm -hmm. that, it also adds to the stealth in the game by a lot. This game has a lot more stealth in it than the first game did. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of stealthing games. Uh, so that's not a big selling feature for me, but it might be for you. Uh, but the truth is there is a lot more stealth in this, but they've given you the tools to do it and do it with, with flair. Yeah. Well, and also the, the, the electricity stuff plays a role in normal combos and real mm -hmm. com actual combat as well. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, they're giving you enough to feel, make him feel different. And he should, because the, you know, his bioelectric powers are kind of key to the character. It wasn't the main differentiator between him and the previous Peter Parker in the ultimate universe. So, um, it is a little weird how like black superheroes do tend to have electric powers. I don't know what that is. Yeah, like, why it's, is that? It's like black lightning, static shock, like all yeah. the, it's it's a storm. Like it it, yeah. it happens a lot. I don't know what that. It's, it's a, <laughs> that is. That's a a thing that people notice in comic books, and they're like, "What? What is that?" I don't, and everyone's like, "I don't know." Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't seem to be a reason for it. it just happens. But uh, it's a really cool way to differentiate him from Peter, and um, along with the cat, and. Uh, yeah, like I got, I got nothing but, but but excitement for this game. Like I'm, I'm all on board. I was on board as soon as they said it, but like yeah. even more so now. <laughs> um, and then really the final detail that they shared that wasn't something that we knew already is that the final version of the game will run in 4K 60 if you put it on like the lean mode. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want everything turned on, it also runs at 4K 30. So now we Which have- Which is what the original did, so I'm, I'm yeah. pretty much okay So now that. we have an example on both 
Xbox and PlayStation of with everything turned on 4K 30 kind of being the limit for a mm -hmm. last gen game. Man, that one shot of him like kind of grabbing the guy as the cat pops out of it. How terrifying would that be if you were the guy he's beating up? Like this is like what the heck? Like there's this weird dude with a face and the hands and they're glowing and then a cat jumps out of the backpack with a mask on. You're like, where am I? Yep. So there you go. That don't do, is uh, don't do crimes, kids. <laughs> Look, I, th this isn't everything. Game Informer did an amazing job. Uh, just go to the game page for Miles Morales on Sifted, and they did a lot of work. We're just crib noting it, basically, uh, plucking out the really important stuff. Some of the interviews with Insomniac are great, um, and they give a lot more insight on how they went about creating. This is the first game with Miles. Uh, mm -hmm. So they had a lot of responsibility in tackling this game. And a lot of the interviews go into that, what it was like working with Marvel. Um, definitely go check it out. Don't just listen to our short discussion here on Game Face and figure that's good enough. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Marvel, uh, Miles was in Ultimate Alliance 3 um, as well, but he obviously, yeah, that's right. that is just not, it's not comparable. It's just, yeah. you know, the characters in that are not, are, you know, he had like four electrical powers, super move things, and that would ever, otherwise he played exactly like everybody else. I liked uh, playing with him though. He was one of Oh, yeah, he was great. He's one of the best characters in the game, I thought. Yeah. Um, that the, the, the move where he could like put the electric webs on the ground as like an AOE thing, that was, yeah. that was, oh, frankly, I was kind of overpowered, I thought, but yeah. I used it all the time. <laughs> I still use it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, so it's looking like 4K 30 with like everything turned on is kind of what we're going to be hitting here out of the gate um, with both consoles. So it maybe, is as it they, is. Uh, maybe as they update the fan speed, we'll get some <laughs> higher frame rates out of something. I don't know. Like, That's funny. There's so many weird little unknowns we don't know yet. But yep. Uh, so anyway, whatever. Just give it to me. <laughs> this is probably the last big blowout of it because it's a Game Informer cover story. Typically, the developer and publisher hold stuff just for those. Um, and there's usually, usually just like a launch trailer. They're going gold. Then there are a launch trailer, and that's pretty much it. But I'm good. I've seen mm -hmm. enough of this game. I'm sold. Um, I think most of you probably have no, know by now whether you're going to pick it up or not. Yeah. Yep. All right, next, I'm going to create some more false outrage for you guys. Apparently, that's what I do. Um, we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, another topic that has me angry. Hopefully, you guys will think I'm okay for being angry about this one. Um, NBA 2K21. I think you skipped Cyberpunk. Oh. oh I, here's I, was the I was wondering what you were... <laughs> here's the Why problem. is he angry about Night City <laughs> episode? Why are episode four? Here's the problem. I, have, I switched them in a rundown, and mm. the new rundown I gave to Jared... And the old rundown I gave to myself. And I, I had switched them around. So you're right. We'll talk about Cyberpunk 2077 first. You have to wait for my feigned outrage. Um, Night City Wire Episode 4 happened this week. Uh, you guys probably know by now, these are the big shows that CD Projekt Red produces on its own. They're hosted by Holly, that girl that used to be the host for uh, PlayStation's official YouTube channel in Europe. Um, and they're very slick, very well done, and usually full of new information and new features for the game. Uh, the last one was a little light on the ladder, but not this one. Um, tons of new information about Cyberpunk 2077 came out of this. Uh, there was there were two big, well, three big focuses, but two that you guys will care about. Uh, one was vehicles and the other was style. And I know you're saying style, I don't care about that either. It's basically just showing you all the cosmetics that are in the game. And I think once you start seeing this B-roll and seeing the cosmetics that are in the game, you will care. The third tenet of this presentation was cosplay. And that's what I was getting at when I said there's one thing you guys probably won't care about. Although you might care about that too. Um, but for our purposes on Game Face, we're going to talk about stuff that relates directly to the game and not the cultural stuff on the fringes. Um, so we're going to talk about vehicles first. Um, so vehicles, let me actually count how many different classes there are. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different classes of vehicles in the game. Actually, there's eight because bikes aren't, Mm. I don't know if bikes are their own class, honestly. I mean, I, I would probably consider would them their own it, class. would assume it, but they yeah. should be. So, yeah. So, that's an extra. They're not going to drive like the cars. So that's an A thing, I would yeah. say. Agreed. Um, so, quickly to go through them, the economy. If anyone's ever rented a car, you know what we're talking about here. Mm. It's a little four-banger, four-door sedan, uh, the type of car that you would rent for like $25 a day. They're small, they're slow, but they're cheap and they're easy. Um, and so, that's the economy. Next is executive. 
And they're just like the big hoopties, like the Cadillacs, like the luxury, big, long boat, righty things. They don't really make those anymore, though, now that I think about it. Like, a Cadillacs are, like, gone now. And they don't really make those. Like, I don't even think they make the town car anymore now that I think about it. Not really. I mean, you got to get, like, if you want something to comparable to that, you got to get, like, a Bentley or yeah, something. Yeah, you have to spend, which is, like, 200 Which is already up in, like, crazy, <laughs> yeah. exotic so luxury Bentleys are, territory. like, a million, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they, they, they have... Um, a style of car that doesn't exist anymore, um, which but is it might, but again, you know, style comes back around. Yep, it does. Just like bell bottoms. If they can come back around, anything can come back around. Uh, next is heavy duty. That's like SUVs, tanks, heavy equipment, stuff like that. Uh, then they have sports cars, which are sports cars, but they have a higher class as well called hyper cars, which are the super cars. Mm. Um, so sport is kind of like my car. It's like a thirty, forty thousand dollar $40,000 two seater. And then the hyper cars is the super cars, which is like your Lambos and your Lamborghinis and your Porsches and stuff like that. Um, and then just the last one is bikes. And the bikes thing is important because I'm really wondering if it was a part of the original plan one, to have Keanu Reeves in the game, and two, to have bikes in the game. Because the bikes that are in the game are actually bikes from his motorcycle company. So I'm wondering if they went to him and were like, hey, we want to make you a big character in this game. And he's like, hey, I want you to put my motorcycles in that game. And thus the deal is is spawned, and off you go. You have Keanu Reeves. I mean, cool the motorcycle, motorcycles, motorcycles are badass. Oh, they are. And then my motorcycles Ooh. are like his first love these days. Yeah. Maybe, maybe tied with ban his band. Yep. But um no, I mean that makes sense as, Dude, a, his, as a the motorcycles his company makes, they're called Arch. They are mm -hmm. bad ass mo they're kind of like supercar motorcycles, to be yeah. honest with you. Most I mean that makes sense as a one. that makes a lot of sense as a cross promotion deal. Yep. To, to and I'm cool with it. The bikes are awesome and they fit. They, they fit look like right they in. fit. They do. Yeah. They I mean they did tweak them a little bit, but they fit. Even if you just look at a photo of one of those bikes, they mesh with that world already. So I have no mm -hmm. problem with it. If it got Kano in the game, I'm all for it. He's I think he's gonna be great in this the game. The game and the marketing and the commercials and the, I mean they they got a good deal out of this man like, he went on stage at E3 last yeah. year like so yeah I'm assuming he he had some asks and I think maybe Arch Motorcycles was one of them and I'm totally fine with it um and then so far now one thing I will say just focusing on vehicles like this is very GTA like mm -hmm. and I honestly didn't think that vehicles were going to be that big of a deal in this game because every time they've shown them in a trailer or gameplay, it always looked like this, like janky, like just a way to get from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. When I first saw them, I even wondered if you actually controlled them. I thought you maybe just got into them and just watched the car drive you to wherever you wanted to go. But no, you do drive all the vehicles. Um, and for some reason, whatever reason, I really did kind of have a, like this weird instinct that it was going to be a very rudimentary driving open world. system. I thought so too, but the no, like, no. Oh, but yeah, like a big, big open world, like when you're running around in the city, but I didn't feel like it was going to, but this is like a lot more that, I mean, I'm, I'm shocked at how much outside the city stuff they've shown. Yeah. With well, the you know, when you, if you, depending on what class you choose, yeah. you may start outside start the out city there. in yeah. the desert. So obviously they didn't have vehicles for that. They need dune buggies and things like that for that mm -hmm. terrain. Now I will say this, it does not look like the sheer amount of cars in Cyberpunk 2077 is going to come anywhere close to Grand Theft Autos, from what they've revealed so far, of those like eight classes, there's like three or four different vehicles in each one of those classes. Now, most of the vehicles are not licensed. Um, they look like, it's just like GTA. They look mm. like vehicles that are real and their yeah. names kind of sound like them, but they're not, they're not licensed. Except You can for the tell, like there's, a, you can see there's a Lamborghini one, there's a Ferrari one, there's, you, know, you can definitely see the influence. Yep, except for the bike, obviously, which is Keanu's company. Which is real, yeah. And it's real. Um, but also Keanu's car inside the game is also licensed and it's the only licensed car in the game. Mm. It is a 1977 Porsche 911 turbo and it's a hundred years old in the game. Do the math. It's, mm. it's a hundred year old car that he still has somehow still after all that time. It's really kind of weird to see all the cars look like cars from 2020 when it's 100 years from now i guess now that i think about it yeah you never know i mean remember that like you are i mean it's 2077 but really you are they're trying to emulate a, a role-playing game from the 80s yeah, yeah it's cyberpunk. um so it's yeah. it, and, and that's part i mean you have to recognize our world in cyber in a cyberpunk thing if you if, you know it, it has to have that sort of attachment 
you know, you know, day after tomorrow sort of element yeah. to it, like five minutes in the future, people call yeah. it. So, and I think they're doing that. I, I think the the fact that there are more mundane areas or outside the city area, even just areas of the city, you see them riding through in this footage that like isn't the neon drenched, you know, neo noir like Blade Runner look. The fact that there's places that look like there might be where people work or live or or where the power stations are or whatever, like that's that's a very important sort of element of verisimilitude and i think i think actually blade runner 2049 did that real well when when uh they bleed yeah. the city and you see sort of what it looks like out there yep. outside of what we think of as sort of blade runner yeah. like that world it feels more lived in it feels more believable it feels more like some it feels more like more cautionary it feels like yeah this could be us eventually you know yeah. like and that's that's how cyberpunk should be cyberpunk should have that sort of it could happen. Yeah, five minutes <laughs> in the future, like, hey, we might be on this path thing, and it also needs to have, you can't forget the punk. That's the big thing. And I'm, yeah. I'm, that's one of my things with, with CD Projekt Red is are they going to get this? I hope so. Like, are they going to get the punk part? The punk part, you always have to be fighting the fighting the man. You have to be up against the system. You have to be the outsider. And, and I think the character archetypes all feed into the outsider idea. So like, they, yeah. they do seem to be getting there. But it's just, it's that thing like with Ubisoft that they finally broke with Watch Dogs Legion where they would continually say, it's like, oh, this game's not political. This is like, oh no, they just last. Tom Clancy is political. Weeks ago, guys. They were like, no, yeah. like they. Finally, yeah, the lead of Watch Dogs yeah. Legion is like, yeah, it's very. Like, <laughs> come on, yeah. finally. But cyberpunk is if you don't want to get political, don't make cyberpunk because that's yeah. what cyberpunk is. Yeah, um, okay. and I think that's this just going to is bleed. Gonna point to stuff no. that's happening right now or anything. But no, but I think it's going to point to societal <laughs> situations that like are relevant in because that's what cyberpunk does. The Witcher Three did that. I yeah, mean, it's just it part. It seems to be part of the DNA as a company. Well, it makes stories interesting. Let's yeah. just be honest. Like, it's just a plot device. That's and it's an effective one. Let him use it. I don't care. Um, and then the final note on vehicles is: while I'm sure if you've watched the trailers, you've seen flying cars, you cannot pilot the flying cars in the game. There are cinematics where you get in the flying cars and you fly them in that fly in them that way, but you never actually control the flying cars. Maybe in a DLC update. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But at launch, that's definitely not going to be the case. Uh, but overall, I'm pleasantly surprised by how robust the vehicles are in this game. And getting to see them in action more makes me feel a little bit better. They don't look as janky as they did now. They look like they actually handle okay, and they have like real physics and things like that. So um, that was one part of the game that I was honestly a little concerned about that I'm no longer concerned about at all. The vehicles look good. Getting around the open world looks good. Uh, I think we're going to be okay there. And then, as I said, the other big tenant was style, uh, a.k.a. cosmetics. And uh, just like the vehicles, the cosmetics in the game are also broken up into classes. Uh, there's kitsch, which, uh, mean, which translated means looks mean everything. Uh, they're typically the very vain characters in the game. Uh, they, they put fashion over function whenever they look at their clothes. Uh, entropism is the opposite. It's all function and no fashion. And I think in the trailer, they showed a guy who was like dressed in sweatpants or whatever. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, I, I probably fall into the entropism group. Mm -hmm. I don't in video games. Like I don't dress like a bum in video games, but like the other day I put on like a pair of jeans and they felt so weird because I have not worn jeans in like months. I'm like, I can't believe I wore these every day. It's so <laughs> weird now. Um, but anyway, that's me. Uh, entropism, that's me. And probably a lot of us right now with COVID going on. Uh, then next is neo-militarism, um, and that's kind of like kitsch, uh, but it's more refined and more traditional. So kitsch is like just over-the-top flamboyant style. Neo-militarism is stylish, but more reserved. And then the last one is neo-kitsch, and that is for strictly for celebrities. And it is just completely over the top. It's the most outrageous cosmetics, mm -hmm. costumes, et cetera. The floating they, bracelets and the hair up to three feet up. and Yeah, all, all, yeah. That, all the really fun stuff. LED honestly. messages on your shunt sunglasses. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one are you going to be, Matt? I mean, I do tend to lean neo neo kitsch uh, okay. in terms of like in terms of that sort of like my preference in um, cyberpunk aesthetic, but maybe neo militarism depending on what it depends kind of what the gear does for you. Yeah, you know, I will I will generally dress uh, in a game um, util in a utilitarian manner. So you give me something, I'll I'll mix and match if I have to to get the bonuses I want. But we'll see how that all works out.
I'm always function over fashion in everything. Function. I ain't wearing sweatpants in a cyberpunk game. Like that's, <laughs> function first. If it's fashionable and, after that, I'm cool. But entropism is for NPCs. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so I think there might be one more Night City Wire before the game comes out. Obviously, feels like, it feels like though there'd be enough time. Like it feels like the time you'd be right to do one last one. Like I a think week, they said the all along that there was going to be five. Actually, I think that sounds about right. Um, so we'll probably get one more. The game is literally a month away. Yep. It comes out November nineteenth, and today is the twenty-first. Yeah, the twenty-first. So it is four weeks away, people. Finally. Um, I'll be excited to see all you guys get your hands on this because I know I've been hyping this game hard since the first time I saw it and I know it deserves it and I can't wait for you guys to see that it deserves it uh, and it won't the wait won't be long. Um, so there you go. Cyberpunk 2077 Night City Wire 4. When they do the fifth one, we will be back to talk about it again. And now we can finally go to Feigned Outrage Part 2 on Game Face 233. Shane loses his top for nothing, man. Again. And this time he's losing it over NBA 2K21. But I bet you, you'll agree with me this time of what 2K is doing because you guys already hate 2K and Take 2. See how it works? <laughs> so a month after NBA 2K21, and we praised this game out the yin-yang last week looking at that next-gen trailer, and it is stunning. A month after 2K releases the game, Take-Two releases the game, and reviews are done, and even the stragglers who wait a while to review sports games have put out their reviews, they, they add unskippable ads to the loading screens of the game. Hmm. So while you're waiting for my team to load or whatever, you're watching ads. On a game, now let's 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 take this back a second. A game that you spent at least sixty dollars on, mm. and if you bought the next gen versions, you paid seventy for it. And, and that's if you didn't get any of the expanded, you know, right. extra versions or right. editions or whatever things. Yeah, yes. those things can go up to like one hundred and ten bucks or something. Dude, it's insane. There's no way you should be running ads in a game people no. paid for. Well, that's also like mobile crap. Isn't the point of next gen that there's no loading? So where are we going to run those ads? <laughs> That's a good point. So look, this happened and people like freaked out. They're like, this isn't, this never happened before in a game that people paid for. Mobile gaming, it's all over and that's fine. Like if I'm getting a game for free, I'll watch ads. I like how mobile handles it in that you can be like, well, I'd rather watch 18 ads or, you know, I'd rather pay. This one you're paying and they're forcing you to watch ads. So people lost their crap because let's be honest, 2K has been pulling his crap for a long flipping yeah. time. 2K is the king of wait a month after release and then put something in there that people are going to hate. They've done it with like loot boxes and other nefarious ways of trying to squeeze money out of their fans. And so I guess that would explain the 0 0.8 user score on Metacritic. Oh, it has a 0 0.8? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see now Cinetai say it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and well-deserved. And then Hail to Starscream brings out something else. The game is already, like, microtransactioned out the ass. It is the yeah. king of microtransactions. And I mean, this series has, has been that for a long time. Yeah, it has been. And, but, and that's the thing. Like, year after year, this happens. They release the game. People bitch about the loot boxes at launch because they're there at launch. But then the rest is okay. Then a month later, 2K is like, whoop, people stop paying attention. Attention. Let me just slide that on in there. And then people freak out for a few days and then 2K reacts and they did react to this. And today they put out a statement, Matt, where they said that it was an accident. That there were ads or that they're unskippable? But actually, that's a good point. I don't know. <laughs> the quote was it was an accident. I don't know if they were saying it was an accident that they. That's a that th very specific distinction there, I would say. <laughs> it is. Boys. Well, actually, it's really not, though, because either way, it's bull crap. This right. Is a game that you paid for. There should be no ads, period. It shouldn't matter at all. It's so freaking dirty. So anyway, they we accidentally they, programmed a thing. Yeah, we accidentally <laughs> programmed this feature into our game that we then had to send over to ad ops, who then has to secure the ad placements and then coordinate with ad delivery to deliver those ads into the it's bullshit. 
It's a lie. This was all planned all along to put it in. If people freaked out, they take it out. And now I mean, like, next, next you're going to tell me that Captain Crunch oops all berries is not a mistake. <laughs> I actually bought a box of those Matt, <laughs> once. Have you ever had them? No, I'm not a Captain I, I, Crunch person. I am a, okay, I'm a cereal connoisseur. I literally am. I love cereal. I've tried every cereal. Every new kind that comes out, I try it. I got a box of those. And I ate, and I do like Crunch Berries with like the Captain Crunch in them. But these are literally just all the colored balls. That's mm. all it is. I ate a bowl of them. I was like, eh, that didn't really sit right or whatever. And then I went to the bathroom and I will never buy a box of those <laughs> ever again. Taste the rainbow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen in my life. And I threw the box out, and I'll never eat them again. <laughs> I don't know how we got on this tangent, but anyway, here we are. Um, <laughs> so anyway, Take-Two has been guilty of doing this crap for years and years now. It is one of the progenitors of the loot box, also one of the progenitors of the I'm not standing down even when there's legislation staring in my face, people for loot boxes. So it, it doesn't surprise me at all that they did this, but it's still just so disgusting. I mean, how do you rationalize doing this in the first place, let alone then lying about, oh, it was an accident? I don't like, know. Like at a certain point, it's like, what? How much money do you need to make off these things? Seriously, like, you're already jacking up the price ten bucks for the PS5 and Xbox Series X versions. How much more do you need to make off a basketball game? It's, it sucks. And the really crappy part is they're the only game in town. So if you're someone who consciously objects to the crap that this company is doing, but you love the NBA, you have no choice. No choice. You have to support this god awful company. Um, and then on, on top of it all, this week, so all the big Halloween things are happening for all the games as a service this week. They've either been announced, they've launched, or they're launching next week. And all of them are free. They're just fun. They're like, hey, put a pumpkin head on your character on Fortnite or whatever. It's all that kind of crap. Red Dead Redemption 2, Red Dead Online. We're doing a Halloween thing. And they do it, and they're charging money for it. Hmm. Again, take two, 2K, whichever company you want to blame it on, same crap. It's the, they are the for as far as this stuff is concerned, they are the worst publisher in the gaming industry, hands down. I don't even know another publisher that comes close because especially now that people are kind of pulling back from that kind of stuff, like they're making all the DLC free in Call of Duty now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like the main question here for me is like, what did you think the reaction was going to be to yeah. this? Yeah, like, did you think you're going to be able to get away with it for a day and you make enough money off ads for mm -hmm. that day? It was going to be worth it. Like, I don't. It makes like, did no one in a meeting be like, hey, I don't know this if you've terrible been idea. outside in the last three years, <laughs> but talk to another human being, which you may not have. They they don't really like this. It's crazy, um, but not surprising because 2K is known for yeah. this. So. Just something to keep in mind if you're thinking about, you know, I know earlier I did say. Waiting for Red I, Dead 2 to make you make you watch like stage plays where people <laughs> try to sell you like razors or something <laughs> from Gillette. That's very possible. That might actually be entertaining. Like though. some kind of snake oil salesman <laughs> coming around trying to like sell you Budweiser or some yeah. shit. Like. <laughs> yeah, so um, anyway, so t look, Take Two is doing it with NBA 2K. And I know I said earlier, you may want to pick this up as like a showcase for your new console. Just keep all this in mind before you pick it up. You may not want to give them your money. And I would totally understand that if you don't mm -hmm. want to give money to a company like this. Um, but... Stuff like this is going to keep happening, and the only way we're going to we're going to stomp it out for good is to raise our voice against it and say that this is wrong and we don't support it. And look, immediately, all it took was one night of Twitter outrage, and next thing you know, they removed the feature. So I wouldn't be surprised if they come back. That's the other thing 2K does is they the outrage comes, and then they remove it, and then like three months later, it slid back in. And most people don't know because at that point, the only people left playing the game are the really hardcore NBA 2K players. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to play it and buy it no matter what. So they don't care as much. The flags don't get raised like they normally do right at launch. It's just so dirty. Just the waiting like a month after launch to put them in so you avoid the critics. Just all of it. It's just gro gross. There's, mm. there's the word of the there day. again. The word of the day is gross. <laughs> uh, so welcome anyway. To, welcome to gross face. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we try to help you guys out when we can. I know a lot of you guys are conscientious and you think about where, you're, where you spend your money. And if you don't want to give your money to a gross company, don't buy NBA 2K21. And that's where I'll end it.
Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Our last topic for episode 233 is the only game that came out this week that really mattered. And Matt, I'm just going to share what I said uh, before we started recording today. And that is that this may be the worst October in the history of video games. I'm not exaggerating. I started going back and looking. I went back like five years. And no, every October destroys this October for five years. I don't know how far back it goes. I'm just saying anecdotally, if I remember correctly, this is the worst October like ever. Um, yeah, there are a lot of games. Real light. There, there are a lot of games. I think Vincent had like 50 games in Dossier uh, this month. But literally like two or three that are really worth caring about. And one of them ended up being DLC, crazily enough. And that is Doom Eternal, The Ancient Gods, Part 1. The first story expansion for Doom Eternal. It launched yesterday. I played it yesterday, and I'm here today to deliver my report. And the first thing I'm going to say is, damn, that game's hard. Oh, my God. So... I, I'll be honest, I hardly ever play DLC, like hardly ever. And so I'm going to ask Matt and the chat, you guys play DLC more often than me, and you would know. But this game, <clears throat> and look, nobody's really played Doom Eternal for months now uh, because it came out like back at the beginning of the year. This game throws you into the deep end. It starts, mm -hmm. there's a cinematic, and then you spawn, and a door blasts open, and enemies just come in, and it's just on. You are... <clears throat> in the final level of Doom Eternal right away. Like, literally. And I, I, I remember right away why I had to drag my ass across the finish line with that game. I really struggled to finish that game, even though it wasn't that long. Because towards the end, I just felt like whether I cleared something or not, it wasn't a matter of whether I played better or worse. It was a matter of whether I got lucky. Whether that one missile or that one fireball from an enemy hit me or didn't hit me. Um, I just didn't feel like my skill had a lot to do with whether I completed stuff or not once I got to a certain level in the game. And when you start up this DLC, it it just is full bore right at the beginning. All the enemies that were at the end of Doom Eternal are there uh, and they start throwing new enemies at you in the second level of the DLC. Um, the very first thing you do is you fight an arena battle on an oil rig that's like three different floors and just like huge and sprawling. And I don't even know how many enemies I ended up taking down before I finally finished the arena. Probably like 300. I'm not even exaggerating. I'm not even counting like the, the cheap ones that they give you to replenish your health and your ammo. I'm talking about like legitimate enemies that I had to fight. Holy moly, man. Like I had forgotten everything about this <laughs> game. I had forgotten like, so every enemy in this game has a quote unquote trick a way that you defeat them, that you can beat them just by pumping them full of lead. But every enemy type has like some little thing that you can do that makes it much easier and much quicker to dispense them. I had forgotten all that crap. I could not remember other than like, what's the, the floating eyeball? That one's easy, obviously. Mm -hmm. You just got to shoot something in its mouth. But the other ones, I could not remember what I had to do to set them up, particularly some of like the bigger like brutes. Um, because some of them are like armored and you have to use like the blood punch to take them out. But then some of them aren't and you have to, you have to shoot the cannons on their arms. I had forgotten all of that stuff. So I had to I relearn. I forgot that it was even a thing until you mentioned it. Yeah. It's been and a I had, long so, time since I played that. Yep. And I had to relearn all the enemies again. And one thing I will say is the game, I think it, it knows because when you die, all the, the loading screens are like, here's how you kill this enemy. Flip. Here's how you kill this enemy. Flip. Here's how you kill this enemy. So I did figure it out pretty quickly. Um, but still, it took me a while to get into the groove and start to understand the combat. I was getting my ass handed to me. Like, I forgot all about, like, how, you, again, like the flamethrower works on a very specific enemy. Literally can drop them, like, with one shot. That's the thing. Like, every weapon, the plasma rifle, like, I used that on one enemy. And he dropped, like, nothing. Like, I'd forgotten all of that stuff. So I had to relearn all of it. And on top of it all, it is literally, the end of Doom Eternal was tough. For me, it was tough. Maybe you guys thought it was no problem. It was hard. And this is harder. Um, it takes a step up. And I realize most people who played all of Doom Eternal to the end and wanted more, this is exactly what they want. For me, I dragged my ass across the finish line. I was happy to finish Doom Eternal. I had no interest in going back to play it again. But as they say, 
distance makes the heart grow fonder. Uh, it came out like in March, I think it was. So it's been like, you know, seven mm-hmm. months ish. Yeah, it came out the same, same day as Animal Crossing. Yeah. Um, and so I was ready to go again. And within like 10 minutes, I was not ready to go again. This game kicked my ass. Um, the good news is, I mean, well, I guess it depends on how you look at it. The good news for me was that it wasn't very long. Like I ended up finishing it in probably like three hours ish, roughly around there. There's only three levels really that you play through. There's the oil rig that I talked about. There's like this swampy area that you play through. And then there's like a crazy, like, future city thing that you play through and there's a boss at the end of each one of them so there's like three bosses um one of them though is just like an arena fight it isn't really like a boss fight um the story stuff i guess i should have started out with that which is what i usually do when we talk about games the story continues directly after doom eternal you've rid earth of the demons and you're back at home base doom guy or whatever the hell he's called is back at home base with all the science it's so weird seeing this doom dude with all these like scientists with like lab coats on and they're talking like all nerdy and then he's just like cocking his shotgun it's just doom is such a weird ip it just really is but that's one of the reasons i like it it's just so different from everything else um so anyway you start out you're basically celebrating you're like oh we just wiped all the demons off of earth and then doom guy is like not so fast and basically the demons have left earth but now they've gone to urduk and they've taken over urduk so now it's your job to go to urduk and clean the demons out of there and that's pretty much the plot. But it's um, Urduk. It's like the the spiritual realm or whatever. Like they basically went to the spiritual realm and started wreaking havoc there. I don't know. It's obtuse and like mm. it's a lot like destiny. They use a lot of words that I didn't know what they meant. But essentially, the demons that you wiped out just went somewhere else, and now you got to wipe them out again. That's the best way to describe it. Um, the plot isn't very heavy-handed. Like, there's a big cinematic at the beginning, which you guys have seen, and then there's just like little, like five, ten-second cutscenes that kind of happen throughout. Um, and then, I don't, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not. I mean, it's not a spoiler if you're trying to figure out whether you want to buy it or not. At the end, there's like a a big cliffhanger, and it says like to be continued because yeah. Well, I mean, it's part one. Right, but what my point is, there you don't get much resolution out of this at all. It is like it's just a setup for what happens in part two. And the reason I bring that up is because some people may be like, "Well, maybe I'll just buy one or I'll just buy the other." Um, you can buy them separately. Um, if you have the deluxe version of Doom Eternal, you get it free. And what'll happen is, is next time you boot up Doom Eternal, you go to the home screen, and there will be a little option there uh, that you select, and then it'll take you. It does like a check, basically. It goes to the store, make sure that you're supposed to have it, and then it asks you if you want to download it, um, and then you do. And once you do that, it is a standalone campaign inside the menu screen. You do not have to have completed Doom Eternal to play it. None of that. None of that matters. Although it, it sounds is, like it expects you to have. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you haven't played it, you have no chance. In fact, I would like to see somebody jump into this who had never played Doom Eternal at all. Because they would literally be dead in like three seconds. I'm not exaggerating. That's how insane it is. Um, so anyway, you get it free if you got the deluxe version of Doom Eternal. Or you can buy them each DLC a la carte because there's this, which is part one. And then part two is coming in a couple months. Um, and you can buy those as a bundle. They're calling it like the year one pass for 30 bucks. So each of these is $15. If you buy them together, if you buy them separately, they're like $20. No, these aren't worth 30 bucks. These aren't worth $15 either people, by the way. If you're a hardcore Doom guy, and I'll say this, there are some people out there that I watch play doom eternal that blow my effing mind like i've watched some speed runs of this game where it's just it's a completely different game to these people completely different they don't even think about like getting their ammo or their health back like they just the way they traverse the levels it's like they can fly like it's really crazy how good some people are at this game i am not one of those games i'm an average one of those guys i'm an average player I do need to kill enemies to replenish my health. I do need to kill enemies to replenish my ammo. So I know there's some people out there that are just itching to get more of this. Uh, people who are on that level of play, I'm sure they're going to gobble this. They'll probably beat it in like five minutes. Um, but for most people, it's a struggle. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to go through the relearning curve of remembering kind of what you need to do in the flow of combat, the right enemies in the right time to so use specific weapons and power-ups and things like that. Um, it takes a little while. But I will say this. I did have fun. 
the checkpoints mostly are good. There are some times, though, where they're not. And you mm-hmm. fight like 40 or 50 dudes and die to like the 51st, and you go back and have to fight all 50 dudes again. It is not for the casual Doom player. If you got like the 2016 Doom reboot, you're like, I like that. And you got Doom Eternal, you're like, I liked it, but maybe a little, don't even touch this. And definitely, I would not recommend anybody spends $30. If the next one is like this, and it's just a couple hours long, no, it's not worth it. Um, that's a lot. That's like half a game, 30 bucks. And that's if you're buying the year one pass where you're getting the deal. So it's really polished. I didn't have any bugs. It's really clean. It's really fast. I did have fun playing it. I did get frustrated a lot. I did get my ass kicked. I did prevail, but I will say I do not recommend paying for it. Um, does DLC ever really go on sale, Matt? Yeah, it does. It does? Pretty so that's awful. what I would recommend then. Like wait even like a year from now, uh, for this stuff to come way down. I mean, I mean a year from now, you'll be able to get the whole Doom pack for like 20 bucks. You know, Bethesda, I mean, I don't know. Bethesda historically has discounted things pretty hard and, and low um, over time. Uh, maybe Microsoft's ownership will change that. But uh, no, DLC goes on sale pretty often. I, I, I definitely keep an eye on DLC sales. Yep. Um, and the other thing, too, is I've been playing a lot of Cold War. Um, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I was in like the pre-alpha. I was in the closed beta, and I played the open beta. And I, ma- I dude, I maxed out my <laughs> Matt. My KD in Cold War is almost two point <laughs> I, I don't know if you remember, but I have said for some reason. All Treyarch's Call of Duties, I dominate in. And then the other ones, I my KD usually hovers around like 1.1 to 1.2. And then every Treyarch, I'm at least like 1.4, 1. 1. I'm over two in Cold War. I just slay. I don't know what is happening, Matt. It's blowing my mind. I finish every match like 30 and 7, 25 and 3, 17 and 8. Like I started taking screenshots of like where it would show you like your KD across your last 10 games, like all of them over two. It's so, like I finished one game like 37 and 4. I don't know what it is about Treyarch's games that I just dominate in them. I dominated all weekend long. And I was like, okay, surely the ELO is going to kick in here and I'm going to start playing against like esports guys because I can't keep just mopping up these people. And no, all weekend long, just dominated. I mind boggling. <laughs> no idea. So anyway, I dominate Call of Duty for like a week straight against everybody who's playing it. And there are literally like tens of millions of people playing it and then get my ass handed to me by Doom Eternal. So a humbling experience to say the least. I think we all need those in life. Just when you start to get up on your high horse, there's always something there to knock you off of it. And that was definitely the first DLC for Doom Eternal. So there you go. You have any questions, Matt? Not really. I you think you'll give it a spin. No. Did you, I, honestly, I didn't, I didn't like Eternal. Doom, I didn't like Doom Eternal that much. Okay. I I liked the 2016 one, and this was a very different direction to me. And I just mostly find it tedious after a while. Like it's it just, does get. I mean, this is only three hours long, so I didn't really burn out on it. But that happened to me with Doom Eternal too. Like it just gets. And again, like I just felt like when I would finally complete something, I was like, I just got lucky that time. Like the grenade mm-hmm. didn't land like at my feet that time or whatever. Like. I didn't feel like I just ruled it at the time. Like, there's just so much going on. You just have like 20 enemies that are like shooting fireballs from like 400 yards away, right on target. And meanwhile, you've got like 20 dudes like in crowd control, like distance. Like, it's a lot to consider. And when you play, and then you watch like some of the pros play, and you're like, now I understand. Like, you play it like it's a different video game than mm-hmm. me. <laughs> So anyway, it's challenging if you're looking for a challenge. Um, and it it look it looks great, plays great, sounds great. All the stuff that was a part of Doom Eternal is there. It's just a shorter, self-contained campaign, but the challenge is definitely ramped up. All right, it's time for Q and A. We're at the end of episode two thirty three. Um, let's see if any of you guys got ahead of it and asked some questions. Um. Oh, here's Nexus S. Batty. Watching your gameplay, Shane, playing FPS, you've always been a bit of a scrub. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. I just probably dominated your ass for the last week at Cold War. So what are you going to say now? <laughs> that's funny. Uh, here's one from Scorefear. 
Uh, will Demon Souls have an easy mode? What percentage of people will stop playing after a week because it's too hard or because they beat the game? Uh, Demon Souls will not have an easy mode. I'm willing to bet. Yeah, I'm willing um, to bet that too. And uh, I mean, I don't know. People have been wanting this thing for a long time, and people play Dark Dark Souls games over and over. And there's still the multiplayer and co-op to be done. I think there's some longevity to it. A lot of people can't beat that game in a week. <laughs> Top of that, like yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to. I can pretty much guarantee I won't be able. To. I'm very curious if uh, if it will if people who've never played Souls games will be giving this one a try just because it's a launch title and there's not much else you know new to buy. Like, I feel like they might get some early adopters sort of just out of curiosity who have never delved into that series. And I wonder, I do wonder what, because it is a full reground up remake, like what they've tweaked and what they've done with it, to, if anything, to make it more new player friendly. Because Dark Demon Souls was a real hard entrance uh, at the just time. Just hit the hype train. Hi! Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. It's freaking awesome. Even though you tried to make fun of me, Nexus 6 Batty, thank you for Twitch Prime. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I should say, too, is I get grief over my footage a lot. And a lot of the time is because it's literally the first second I played the game. Like, I, we only record the first hour for Game Face. And we don't want to spoil anything for you. So I record literally the first five minutes I play the game. I'm not warming up. I'm not learning the game first. It's the first time I'm playing it. Now, you could argue maybe I should go back afterwards and replay the beginning of the game again. I'm not doing that. I don't have the time for that crap. So if you want to make fun of my footage, I don't care. We got B-roll in our show. You aren't getting it anywhere else. Um, Fire Native, thank you for Twitch Prime. Call of Duty 1, thank you for Twitch Prime. Texture Glitch, thank you for Twitch Prime. Johnny Hurricane, what's up, brother? Thank you for Twitch Prime. Uh, who else? JM Rain, thank you again, man, for making it rain. All those emotes that we all got, that's awesome. It's so funny. Like, I didn't even realize the importance of the emotes on Twitch. Um, because I'm always on the show when all this is happening. I'm like, oh, we just got emotes. That's great. Well, my buddy's DJ on the weekends on Twitch. And I go into the chat, and I'm, like, talking to my buddies from Philadelphia or whatever. And I realize I have this gigantic arsenal of emotes. Like, everybody else has, like, five and I have like 500, like it's crazy what all the people watching Game Face have unlocked for all of us across Twitch. Like everyone's like, where'd you get that one? I'm like, I don't even know. It's just here. I can just use it. And that's all because of the hype train, jam rain, all the people giving us bits. It's awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, here's a question for Matt from ETH Demon. Uh, what's your opinion on the Disney reorg and them at least saying that they are prioritizing streaming? What do you think the future of theaters are given AMC's inevitable bankruptcy? Um, I think it's an interesting move uh, by Disney. Uh, someone had to do it first because look, there's no end in sight in terms of reopening theaters uh, fully in the United States anytime soon, probably not until about this time next year, I would think. Um, I think we'll be, to be clear, I think like, by maybe spring next year, we'll be able to go, you know, we'll have our vaccinations. Maybe we'll be able to go hang out with each other masked in places. We'll be able to, you know, go over to his friends' houses and feel pretty confident with that. But in terms of going to like a bar, like with, with, you know, with no precautions or, or maybe even in a newer restaurant or something like a theater, that's going to be a long time. And Disney is like you know, end of next year, probably, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And he is, you know, acknowledging that and moving forward on this. And look, if it means I get to see Black Widow on in a timely manner or whatever else they're releasing in a timely manner without having to risk my life in a freaking theater. Awesome. Or go to a drive in because I'll say this. I had fond memories of drive ins uh, when I was younger. Um, not the way you want to watch a first run movie, uh, no. especially with these the way they do it now. And like and like you got people driving car stereo in and car stereo and AM or like radio. People, people driving. <laughs> I mean, you know, I had, I had run it through like a, a separate speaker things. I have to have my car on and run the battery down. But like, you, you, yeah, you get people flashing your the lights as they drive in, and so you get headlights on the screen, and so yeah. it's, it's not ideal. No, it, you it's, know. Dude, you go to drive ins with your bros and your girl, and yeah. you you sneak some beers into the drive in, and you drink them, and you party and hang out at like the concession stand. Mm -hmm. It's an experience thing. It's not about really yeah. watching the movie. The the back seat was the more important place, really. In, yep. <laughs> in the end. Um, I wasn't gonna go there, but you did. But yeah, you're right. I'll I mean, go that's, there. that's why I went to the movies whenever I was like ten to like fourteen. But like, um, you make so out. that's a, that's a, a stopgap solution. It's fun to do that for like movies you really know and love. Like they did a Rose Bowl screening of. Um, 
like open air screening of Empire Strikes Back for the 40th anniversary. Like that's, that's cool. cool. I, didn't, I didn't get to go to that, but that was that's a cool way to do it. Um, so I think pivoting to that is definitely what has to happen in terms of the revenue model for the big tentpole pictures. Like if you spent twenty two hundred million dollars on something, you got to put it out in theaters internationally, and you got to put it out so people can see it uh, on a subscription service. You know, Disney's lucky they got Disney Plus up when they did, um, so they actually have an outlet for that. As far as the future of theaters. Um, theaters aren't going anywhere. When this is over, theaters will be back. But AMC, as you know, will probably be gone. Um, the trick is... Yeah, they're right on the... They're other, teetering right on the brink. <laughs> other companies will take over that business. There's yeah. still tons of money to be buy made the theaters in that and they'll move right in there. And um, the studios might try to buy some. Like that, that uh, previously And here's was, the thing. They'll probably do it better. They might. I mean, previously that's been made illegal. Like that was a whole problem back in the old, the golden age of Hollywood was when all the studios owned the distribution methods, which was its own whole other can of worms. Um, but it will come back. And the other thing to remember, and this is my real estate developer side coming out. Um, but if you own the land or the buildings that, a th that is a theater complex, the last thing you want to have to do is pay the money to renovate that thing into some other kind of business because that is a very specialized structure. Yeah. And the people who own the theaters are going to want to lease them out as theaters again. Yeah. So they're not going to go anywhere. Like, what, like well, they're not going to bulldoze them. No, they're, they're not going to get torn back. down. They're not going to get turned yeah. into gyms, right? which you also won't be able to go to. You're not going to see that happen. The theaters will come back. Will the people come back to them? Like, I guess that's a good question, but I do feel like the social experience of seeing a movie in a theater with people is never going to fully go away. Um, and frankly, um, I would see one of the, just about anything in a theater with other people right now if you offered it to me without with a, with a guarantee that I wouldn't get sick yeah. because uh, I just miss it. I just miss people. Yeah. I miss freaking people. I missed all you freaking people for the last month when we were doing this show, Matt and I just alone and me sitting mm -hmm. in the studio and Matt sitting in his, there's such an element that's added to the show doing it live on Twitch. I'm so glad we're back uh, for so, so many reasons. Uh, next question from Johnny Hurricane. You ready for the mad rush of November and the lack of sleep? Uh, I've had, since COVID started happening, my sleep, schedules have got all out of whack. I start getting, I look, just for reference, I used to go to bed at like two, three in the morning every night, every night. Even when I worked at GT, I was going to bed at three in the morning, sleeping like five or six hours, getting up, going to work. Mm -hmm. Since COVID started, I've started getting tired at like 10 o'clock and I fought it for the first like couple of months. And now I'm like, I go to sleep at like 11, 1130 now. And I get up, sometimes I wake up at like 5.30 or 6 in the morning. It's crazy. I feel like I'm turning to my mom. Like mm. my mom wakes up at like 4 in the morning. I'm working my way there. So my sleep schedule is all out of whack right now. Um, I am nervous about that because you're right. In November, we need to play games wall to wall. And I need to do late nights to do that. And I'm really concerned that like for the first time in my life, I may not be able to do it. I may have to start playing games at like four in the morning, which is the last thing I want to do. So I'm going to try to start getting myself into a decent schedule um, to try to get ready for November. But you're right, man. Man, we all got to prepare and try to figure out how we're going to get through it. It's going to be crazy, but it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I've had periods where I've had like weird, you know, because I am the same. I two or three in the morning is generally when I want to go to sleep. And I was the same, you know, working at G4, go to go to sleep at two, get up at eight or whatever. You know, luckily we did have a job where we didn't have to be there to like 10, except unless it was a shoot day when yeah. we had to be there at seven, which sucked. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still mostly like that even now. But there were periods like earlier in the summer where like I was falling asleep at 10 and getting up at five. And it's I'm just so like, bizarre. Well, I'm, like you get guess, up, it's still dark. Like yeah, I come I'm in just here. like, I guess I'll go for a walk. I don't know. No, as long as, as, long as I'm now working. an old man. So let's I, do it. <laughs> I come in, in this room and I start working. I have to turn on a light because it's dark. It's mm. so weird. It's so opposite of how I've been my whole life, but that's, that's COVID for well, you. It's going to get even more and more like that as the, as the time change happens yep. and yep. Winter, turn winter. winter rolls in. Yep. Uh, next from the Big Smoke 82. How do you guys think the current gen versions of Cyberpunk 2077 will run? It's the only game I'm looking forward to playing and have decided not to upgrade to the next gen yet. I'd That's be a, little a fine nervous. question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If I, if I had anything other than an Xbox One X, I would be 
a little nervous. Question. Even a PS4 Pro, I'd be a little on edge. Yeah. Because it, I'm be honest with you, it just doesn't look like it's been optimized that much for current gen. It seems like it's been built for PC first, and then everything else kind of trickled down. Um, yeah, and I mean, we'll see. I mean, look, CD Projekt Red has has a history of very strong support, but they also, also have a bad history frame rates. Of, but they also have a history of trouble at launch. You and know? bugs and. There's it's a reason that they did enhanced editions for Witcher One and Two to basically for free to basically fix everything that was wrong with them uh, when they launched. Um, you know, Witcher Three had problems on PS PS4 for a long time, and yeah. some would you know some on the vanilla PS4. I don't know if they're even still fully fixed. Yeah, still problems. Yeah. Um, they they did had weird HDR problems on the Xbox One X version for a while. Like, um, you never know. You don't know what you're gonna run into here, and. Um, like I'm, I mean, I don't know. Like, if you don't want to, I've upgrade, never seen it running on PS4. No, so, they haven't or seen Xbox that. One. Every time you, I seen it, you, it was on a PC. And honestly, like, I, I mean, it's not like I would pass it up if I was buying it on current gen, but I would definitely wait to see what like Digital Foundry has to say about the current gen stuff before I commit to which which version I buy. And I know that sucks because you might end up having to wait, like, not getting it like launch night or whatever. But like, Digital Foundry usually usually has stuff up like day of or day before or yeah, something. So good. like, and there's no pre order bonuses. I don't think there's no super editions you got to choose from or anything like that. So I feel like. Just just take your time and, and wait for impressions on how it runs and make your decision then, I guess. Um, like, it's, it's a hard, it's a, I, I am worried about that. And I mean, I'm not going to play it on current I'm gen concerned. stuff, but like, I'm it's concerned. definitely, it's definitely I'll a valid worry. Admit it. No, I am definitely yeah. concerned. Yep, for sure. It's a valid worry. Because I'm going to play it. I mean, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm going to play it on, you know, well, something. Yeah. I don't, I haven't really chosen yet. I, I don't either. know. Like, I'm kind of waiting for Digital Foundry on that, too. I'm like, <laughs> yes, Fiber or Xbox out. Series X? Like, which one? Like, I really don't know. I mean, my, my instinct would be to say Series X just from their track record because it's more of a standard PC, and they probably were more familiar with that, and maybe it's not optimized too well for the PS5 hardware. But, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know how this is going to turn out. Yep. Uh, next from Justin Horman. Are there any games that released recently that you've held off on playing until next-gen launches because they perform poorly on current-gen consoles? Well, I think... <laughs> For a lot of people, it could have been Cyberpunk 2077, but I think a lot of people may wait until they get the next-gen console, depending on the reports that come out about it. Um, I unfortunately don't have the luxury of just putting a game aside. Um, I did not finish Ghost of Tsushima, and I am excited about the prospect of finishing that on my PlayStation 5 after I get through all the launch stuff. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I mean, that game looks great already. So otherwise, no for me. What about you, Matt? Um... Was it like waiting to play? Yeah, because you want to play them when the on a better system. No, like uh, maybe if I didn't have to, it wasn't doing the show. I would maybe do that with Watch Dogs Legion, but I don't think I would be patient enough for that, especially with the free upgrade to the. Especially after October, how yeah. god awful this month has been, man. I'm cracking out. I need a good game to play. Um, I am kind of waiting on Cold, Cold War. I mean, I'm sick of playing it. Like I am kind of waiting on the on the the Ghost of Tsushima patch that just came out for that. I guess like I haven't touched that. I probably won't touch that until then. I am, I am starting to get the. I obviously said I got the itch to replay. Spider-Man, I got the itch to replay Last of Us 2 coming up, um, but I'm waiting on the next-gen version, you know, the remaster Spider-Man and whatever they do with Last with Last of Us before I do that. Um, also, because, like, look, going through Last of Us 2 is a is a journey. Um, it is. Not, not quite ready for that just yet. Yeah. There's, there's other, <laughs> I don't know if I'm over play the some, first trip. Through. I'll play something happier like Valhalla <laughs> or Cyberpunk before I go back to that Let's one. Let's usually knock his new weird game, Ball on Wonderworld or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> That'll know, do they, it for you. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a wacky... That Billy Hatcher meets Night. That game looks thing. terrible. Like, yeah, I'm not I'm well, not I said it from day one, and the more I see, the worse it looks. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a little... Um, I, f I feel bad like ripping on my old Sega heroes like that. Like that looks I know, dumb. I, even though I love it. I love Knights. I love all that stuff. But Yuji Naka's like, oh, I don't know. Meanwhile, I'm just like, I don't even want this art book from the stupid Yu Suzuki game. Like, it's just like I, I feel like it's all turned around and weird now. Yeah. But I'll, I did, however, appreciate. I don't know if you saw. There was an interview with uh, um, uh, Mikami. Uh, really in-depth interview. Oh, it was great. That was an amazing feature. But he it. straight up said, like, the, the pre-rendered backgrounds and the tank controls of Resident Evil were just a workaround because they couldn't figure out any other way to do it, and he thinks it's garbage, and people come up and say, oh, it's what made it really scary. He's like, please stop, talk. Please stop saying that. It's embarrassing. And I'm like, thank you. He's like, Resident Evil 4 was finally what I wanted to make, and that's what it was. I'm like, thank you. I yeah. hate the tank control. It's It was never scary. It was just irritating. Uh, not, sir. Thank you for Twitch Prime. Appreciate it. Uh, here's a question from Mike's Q. Uh, 
Um, are there any movies that you're excited to watch on your Ultra HD players in the PS5 or Xbox Series X? Are they able to pre-order the 4K Lord of the Rings trilogy? And I am so stoked to watch them in December. Yeah, I mean, no that, that Lord of the Rings trilogy is is probably the thing I'm... It's the, I have it on pre-order too, so I'm waiting for that for sure. And I will use my probably my PS5 or xbox for that because that's what will be hooked up i mean i do the xbox series x or xbox one x does do uhd so like i have watched uhd things on it it looks great you know it's fine mm -hmm. um it's one of the reasons i got the disc version of ps5 because i want to have the playback because usually sony's playback is very good mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean i'm looking for, i mean it's not really a thing on my mind but like i will certainly use one of those consoles to watch lord of the rings when it comes out i've been certainly waiting for that to be on 4k forever so uh yeah i mean i guess i agree Lord of the Rings and um this is my first ultra HD player. This will be this is the first time I will be capable right. of watching movies. Well now you have a TV that really does it justice. So you'll you'll notice it you'll notice the difference. I It'll, can't think of maybe if they re-released like every Star Wars movie in 4K, I would buy it, but um, otherwise I mean you can watch them in 2K on yeah. um on uh Disney Plus. And there are the you know the despecialized versions that they've done that they've done on the internet. Uh, there are 4K transfers of the originals, uh, at least uh, Return of the Jedi and um, and um, the and Star Wars. I think they're still working on Empire, uh, but they found a pristine 70 millimeter print of Return of the Jedi, so they digitized wow. that first and cleaned it up. It's good. they're gorgeous. They they wow. they look better than they would have looked in the theaters in the eight in, in the original days. So that would be a good thing to run on that TV if you can find a way to do that. Um, Otherwise, you need, of course, you need the UHD discs. Uh, yeah. For and you know, there's a couple that are really good. I mean, um, Wonder Woman is is a uh, reference quality uh, UHD disc. That one, like the the, original, the UHD version of Wonder Woman, is one of the most gorgeous pictures you will ever see. Uh, any any UHD version of those BBC World Nature documentaries oh, that yeah. David Attenborough yeah. does, yeah. like that. I mean, when I first got my plasma, that's all planet I watched Earth. for like a like week. Like I bought planet the whole Earth box and, set of Planet yeah. Earth, man. Planet <laughs> Earth, Frozen Planet, like all that. Yeah, Amazing. all that stuff. And then when I got my 3D TV and I wanted to get 3D stuff, I started buying all their 3D stuff too because mm -hmm. it's all the best 3D stuff. And I do have some UHD stuff from things I really like. I have the, like the UHD version of Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets, which is a terrible movie, but sure, it looks it sure looks good. Uh, Pacific Rim, I have the UHD of Pacific Rim because I love that movie despite itself. Um, yeah, so I have I have a bunch of UHD stuff that I've already seen. I am curious if it'll look any different or sharper or what the tweaking settings will be on each system. Like I'm curious to kind of dig into that. But it's probably like 13th on my list of things to do with the new consoles. But that yeah. luckily by the time uh, Lord of the Rings comes out at the beginning of December, I'll have gone down to about 13 number 13 on the list. So we'll be ready for that. Um also any UHDs you can get of Pixar stuff. Amazing. Okay. We'll answer one more throughout a time, and we're going to answer Jam Rain 99 because he made it rain today with all the bits and all the emotes for all of us. Thank you, Jam Rain. Um, and his question is, and I just lost it somehow. Oh, here it is. What would it take to bring back interest in Avengers campaign um, DLC? Yeah, me? I guess so. I mean, I'm I'm because I haven't played it in weeks. Uh, there are three people on my friends list who play that every day. Um, every single day they're on it, they're on that game. <laughs> well, look, I don't begrudge anyone for what they. No, have, I mean, right? so it works for someone. It yeah, works for some people. Some people are interested. I played like kind of the main, st like the the post game missions, and got some stuff for the characters I liked, and I just sort of checked out. I will probably come back when Hawkeye comes out, just to try him. Um, that's really what I need is more characters DLC to try characters, and more yeah. deals and more reasons to come back and. Be told story the story with these characters. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah, exactly. Even if it's just like the character, you know, solo mission thing like they have for the other characters, like that's enough for me. Give me a new boss to fight. Give me a new character to see. Um, that'll do it. But it's just they've been completely dormant for like a month and a half. I don't think there's anything they could do to the games as a service stuff to make me come back. But probably not. If, if they release more campaign DLC, I will be there in mm -hmm. a heartbeat. I love the campaign in that game. I enjoyed every minute of it. So yeah, that is definitely their strength. I hope they can find they a way can to deliver sort of pivot more of that. that. I'll be yeah, there. If they absolutely. don't, I won't. And look, Destiny kind of learned that lesson a little bit in places as yeah. well. So that's not, it's not unprecedented. Yep, that's true. All right, that's it for Game Face episode 233. I'm sorry I didn't get to all your questions. I, there's so many more down here. I'm sorry, guys. I wish I could answer them all. 
The good news is we should be back live again next week. So some of those questions, hold them for next week. We'll try to get to as many as we can. Uh, just a reminder for those of you who are watching or listening rather on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever. Uh, if you're enjoying the show and you'd like to keep getting episodes, please head over to patreon.com slash sifted. That's S-I-F-T-D. And you can ple pledge as much or as little as you want every month. And we appreciate every single dollar. If you're on YouTube and you can't afford to contribute in any way, although you can join us on YouTube now and get everything day and date, check that out. Just hit the join button. Uh, but if you can't do that, there's always Twitch Prime. You can literally give us a free $2.50 every month for just clicking a button. It takes one second. Once you have it set up, it takes one second. So if you could do that, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks to everybody live on the show today. I don't even know how many Twitch Prime subs we got. It just seemed like they were just, just littering the chat all show. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks to Jam Rain for all the bits. We're way behind. This is a huge help. Um, and just, just really good to be back on Twitch, talking and hanging with you guys. Um, and it's just going to get better as the uh, Generation 9 consoles get closer. So on behalf of Matt, who you can find on Twitter at mkyle, that's K-E-I-L, and myself, who you can find on Twitter at dinfire, we'll be back next week. Game Face is up and out. Thank you.